We have got a great WAN show lined up for you guys. Welcome, everyone. How do I know it's going to be great? Because I'm really tired. Because it's the WAN show, and, and it's great every time. And Luke is gonna Luke is gonna help me. Luke yeah. is gonna help me make it great today. <laughs> um, our main topics are: uh, we had a power outage last week, and when we stitched together the clips of the WAN show, our main topic was um, cut by accident. Worn out of it. There are conspiracy theories that Microsoft found out we were going to talk <laughs> about Windows Modern Standby and cut the power and deleted the VOD. Um, actually, it was just a miscommunication with the clips that had to be salvaged from one place and another place and put back together. Anyway, the point is, we're going to rehash that real quick styles for you guys. We're also going to be talking about, ooh, the big controversy this week. Oh, I mean, CoffeeZilla versus Logan Paul? There's been a number of big controversies this week, It seems actually. like the internet lately, to be honest. Lately, you People say. are, like, competing to see who can be that week's major news. Not even that month's. CoffeeZilla alleges Logan Paul's crypto zoo is a scam. Bum, bum, bum. And uh, NFTs were a scam? And Logan Paul is not the only creator that CoffeeZilla has exposed recently. My he, only question is, him. am I next? Yes. CoffeeZilla, what dirt you got on me? I'm genuinely curious. We haven't sold NFTs. What else you got? That helps a lot. Um... <laughs> We also don't have a crypto coin. That also helps a lot. Um, let's see. I don't know. I kind of want to talk about this. Filmora yeah. pulling lifetime licenses. Ooh. Not a good look. Ooh, not a good look at all. Also, graphics card leaks. Those are fun. People like those, right? 4070 Ti, maybe, leaked. Somebody will find it interesting. Not him. <laughs> I mean, don't you think 110 degrees on the 7900 XTX being in spec is interesting? Yeah, I'm also not surprised, though. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. All right, let's roll that intro. The show is brought to you today by Seasonic, Manscaped, and Squarespace. So you can power up your grooming tools and make a website about it. Maybe, yeah. Maybe don't make that website. All right. Why don't we jump right into our first topic for the day? Is it Windows? Is it Modern Standby? It's Modern Standby. We're doing it again. Let's talk about it. Yeah. All right. Our little video about Windows Modern Standby really lit some fires internally over at Microsoft. And Alex was able to have a chat with the VP of Windows Platform and Services to go over some questions. Question number one. Why the heck is S3 Sleep, which, you know, seemed to work pretty good, being removed from the BIOSes of laptops? And the answer is Microsoft is moving away from S3 Sleep because how each device goes to sleep is controlled by that device's firmware. That means for a device to sleep properly, the firmware needs to be maintained by the company that made said device. And I don't know about you, Luke, but sleep has worked perfectly on every computer I've ever owned. I, I genuinely don't believe I have ever actually had a computer where sleep consistently worked. Mm. Ever. I don't think I have. You haven't actually owned that many computers. No, that's know. true. Yeah. That's valid, true, I and think fair. you've owned two laptops ever. No. Your Asus nope. and I'm the Razer. My, I'm on my fourth. Really? What do you run for a laptop now? I, I got a pretty cool one, actually. Did you steal it from work? I did. You told me to, to be fair. You literally told me to you on the show. Guy. There is footage proof of this. You threw laptops oh. at me. I did do that. You did. What are you running now? What did you take? I did. What do you have? I didn't. <laughs> I didn't and actually... did you use it to cheat in the ARC challenge? <laughs> no. No. I genuinely didn't. Okay, what is it? Uh, I actually don't even remember. It's an Asus laptop. It's a nice one. I don't remember the model. I didn't ask. Like, I just asked for a laptop. That was it. And and I got handed, like, a very nice one. I All was right. like, cool. It does, like, when you turn it on, it goes, like, Pshoom. Okay. I know that much. All right. Yeah, it does that. By using S0 Sleep instead of S3 Sleep, Microsoft gets more control over sleep instead of the device manufacturer and has a much higher success rate for everything going to sleep and waking up properly. Using S0 Sleep also apparently helps with security since Windows is in control of the device at all times. 
Okay. Our next question is, um, well, you know, that's the problem, obviously, still, because it's not working properly still. So what is being done? As we anticipated, figuring out what's going wrong with Windows Modern Standby is very difficult, since many of the bugs are what they called Heisen bugs, aka if you observe the bugs, their behavior actually changes. Um, a lot of telemetry is turned off during sleep to reduce power consumption, obviously. But this also means that if you turn on said telemetry to try to diagnose a problem with sleep, well, the test you're running is no longer the same because now you've got a bunch of telemetry running. Yep. Um, they've looked into the situation that we described where a laptop doesn't properly go into disconnected sleep when you unplug it while it is sleeping. On some devices, it looks like we actually got it right. That does seem to be a problem and they're looking into a fix but they said it is only one of many potential ways that modern standby can cause problems basically if we want this issue to go away microsoft needs a whack ton of data all right then how I will are say they one, get one thing before you before you go there i will say the heisenbugs thing yes i think most people when they hear that aren't going to think like if you, you change breaking something bad yeah yeah, totally. I can see that. Yeah. Anyways, doesn't matter. Our chairs are at really different heights today. Need to... Ah, that's that better. what happened. <laughs> yeah, that's not real. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, anyway, so what should you do? When modern standby problems happen to someone within Linus Media Group, we've been given a direct line to report these bugs, um, which is great for us to help get them data. But as you can probably imagine, um, not everyone is gonna be able to do that. Well, okay, so first the process for us. When we find a laptop hot and dead, uh, we can go into command prompt as an admin and type in power C, mm, this has gotta be CFG, that's gotta be a typo. Uh, power config space slash sleep study. This makes a zip file with all the battery data from our computer for the last while. Um, the notes here say maybe do this on your laptop now to demonstrate. I did it last week. The float plane version of the VOD, I think, actually does have it. I think so. I think so. So I'm not going to bother doing it again. The point is it makes a little zip file. We are then able to forward this log directly to Microsoft so they can hopefully figure out what's going on. Unfortunately, not everyone gets a direct line to Microsoft, but by reporting bugs, we can hopefully get them more data to figure things out. And these are the steps. The feedback hub is the best way to provide detailed feedback on issues to the Windows engineering team. Do you want me to show it? On yeah, screen? yeah, sure. Uh, the tool gathers detailed logs and can run additional diagno diagnostics, diagnostics to help them fix issues. Uh, the feedback hub uh, can be opened up in Windows, and you just need to give yourself a relevant title. Like, uh, say, for example, that my computer battery is draining while it is asleep. Click report a problem, then provide more information on the specific issue. We've got an example kind of filled out for you, but the more details you can provide, the better. Uh, what was happening before? What was happening after? Click next, choose power and battery and sleep. It might actually automatically select this based on what you provided in the description. And make sure though, that you get the right, um, the right dropdown selected here. Uh, this way it will actually end up with the appropriate engineering team. It will also help to gather relevant telemetry from your system. Next, new feedback. And then on the add more details section, mark as high severity if you've hit the battery drain issue. This is clearly a major focus for them. Uh, then for items below, I'd pick inability to use my PC. I mean, your battery's dead. So like, come on, let's go. In section four, this is the most critical part gathering additional data. Without this, they will not have enough data to diagnose the issue. So for the battery drain issues, select sleep, click start recording, then wait 10 seconds or so and press stop. You don't need to go through the actual sleep process, nor do you need the screenshots. It may take a minute or two after stopping the recording, by the way. Um, you can also put your computer to sleep during the process, then reawaken it. It will collect data across this process, then click submit. There's also a forum post, which maybe Luke will open here, that will show you guys how to go over these steps if you didn't manage to catch everything that we just said just now. Thank you very much, Alex, for creating that. So that's, that's it, guys. The only way for us to solve this problem is to work together, get Microsoft as much data as we can about the problem because in their defense, and I think I often give Microsoft a pretty hard time, yeah. They're a multi, many billions 
of dollars company. And sometimes they have problems that I just, that feel just utterly inexcusable. Like any of their multiplayer gaming stuff basically at all on PC. The default search within Windows Start Menu. Oh my God. Yep. How that is so bad in this day and age. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it just, it boggles the mind. I give them a pretty hard time. But in their defense, in defense of, uh, of, of our corporate overlords. Please don't cut the power to the WAN show. <laughs> it really is a huge challenge supporting such a wide variety of different configurations. And on the PC, it is functionally infinite, right? Like even on Android, you guys, I think, struggle a fair bit on the Floatplane app compared to iOS. Is that fair to say? The devices, yeah. Because there's so many devices. And you try to change something and it like, okay, this like API version will cut off this many devices if you try to use it, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Like it's, it can be pretty annoying. Um, and that and is... sleep is, as we mentioned earlier, a very tough problem to diagnose. Yes. On Android, it's a fraction of what you deal with on the Windows PC side of things. Within a single generation of devices, you've got your Intel, you've got your AMD, you've got all your different tiers of all the different SKUs from both of them. Oh, don't forget there's desktop and mobile, right? And then, oh, well, I mean, there's not, not just one motherboard. No, 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 you've got dozens upon dozens of motherboard options for every one of those chips all with slightly different firmware. Oh, and don't forget that you might plug any number of random... What, you plugged a tape drive in? Who plugs in a tape drive? <laughs> right, like that's the kind of thing they're dealing with. And all these different devices, many of which are engineered by very, very small teams, surprisingly small teams. Like like some... some ran okay, I just became aware yesterday of a sound card, okay? A sound card from way back in the early 2000s that you need if you want to build a DIY first-gen Xbox dev kit. And they're in short supply because I guess people build first-gen Xbox dev kits like for fun. Um, so, so an enterprising member of the community actually created a blueprint for this sound card that you can send to some like... PCB. Yeah, small printers. run PCB manufacturer yeah. overseas, and they'll whip it up for you for about 50 bucks and send it back. And I'm like, okay, so let's say you get a PCIe to PCI adapter and you put one of those damn things in your system. Who knows how that goes to sleep? <laughs> so it is legitimately a difficult problem for real. Hopefully, this helps. And that's all I have to say about that. Why don't we move on to the CoffeeZilla news? Can I just say, I only recently became aware of CoffeeZilla's channel, and I feel like I've really been missing out because it's awesome. Me too. I haven't had enough time to watch full length, but like, juicy. Yeah, I. It, this isn't actually, it's, it's one of those funny things where, you know, just serendipity strikes sometimes, and I became aware anew of CoffeeZilla twice this week. Like I'd, I'd never become aware and then twice they landed, um, twice they landed in my, in, in my inbox or in my, it was actually a, a, a document that I was reading kind of like, uh, like a, like a marketing, uh, like a marketing guide document that I was looking at trying to figure out how to market better on LTT store. And it was written for me specifically and had like a kind of a tone to it. Um, something, 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 don't do this. You don't want to end up on CoffeeZilla. And I was like, okay, A, I would have never done that in the first place, but B, what the crap is CoffeeZilla? And then it ended up in my inbox because of the crypto zoo issue. Now, I want to say, first of all, that it kind of could have been us. Remember Linus Coin? Yeah, but we never did it. No, okay, so A... We never actually built a crypto token. It's amazing how much people wanted us to make one. Though. And B, <laughs> what were we going to call it at the end of the day? Drop coin or like oh. rug pull coin or something like that? I like, know rug pull coin got, got, <laughs> that got, got mixed around. around a little bit. Yeah, I'm throwing around. There we go. Because yeah. the whole idea was that we were going to be like, okay, this is a grift. 
we're gonna own it. We're gonna be up that front. Was, yeah, we were like, this is the only way we're gonna do this if we if we just openly tell everyone we're scamming them. <laughs> and like you, this is a way to donate. <laughs> and if you guys ultimately go for it, then hey, we were all on the same page here. Yeah. Um. So that that what that was never going to happen. But I'm really glad that even if we had approached it that way, like LOL, we're scamming you. I'm glad we didn't because man, the way that sentiment has changed from LOL meme coins, yeah, it's all a big ripoff to. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that this collapsed and my life savings are gone. It feels like it happened really fast, hey? Yeah, definitely. And I, one of the reasons why we ended up not doing the whole rug pull coin thing <laughs> rug pull coin. was because we didn't trust people to take us seriously that it was a scam. I don't even remember all the... Con we had multiple we conversations did. around this. We did. yeah. Because it's like, honestly... If you want to get rich quick, it really does seem like the winning move. Just scamming people? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how much more money would I have if I just scammed people? Probably a lot. Like took like all the gambling sponsorships. But then CoffeeZilla where is going to come for you. Where you're getting paid to... The, okay, so so what all is there? Okay, like gambling seems like a really good one. By the way, we, we do not accept <laughs> any gambling sponsorships. Gambling sponsors, forget about it. Yeah. But like gambling sponsorships. So you had uh, you had what's his nuts? Train wrecks? Um no, 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 old school. That guy that had the razor sponsorship for the longest time. Razor sponsorship. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where he owned the the like like CSGO betting site oh, or whatever. I'm not gonna remember the name, but there was two of them, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah, there was two guys. The, the two different CSGO yeah. like skin gambling sites or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that whole thing. So there's that. Then there's the one where you supposedly are gambling on a site and like on? winning, but actually that site is giving you money to lose on the site. That's a really popular yeah, one. Yep. A uh, syndicate, syndicate. That's the one. That's the one. Yeah, that was. I can't believe the like tiny little wrist slap that those guys got off with. Like, holy smokes. Um, what 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 are what are some of the other what are some of the other good games? So yeah, gambling on a site you actually own. And then gambling on a site where you're being paid and, oh, right, and the odds are tilted in your favor to make it seem like you're going to win because you're being paid by the site. That's, uh, yeah, that seems to be two of the really popular ones. And then, of course, there's the whole NFT one. So why don't we, why don't we get into what exactly it is that happened with CryptoZoo? We'll, we'll talk a little bit about, um, you know, our take on this, but this is not a substitute for going and watching the CoffeeZilla video because it is excellent. Uh, the one that I actually, yeah. I haven't I haven't watched this one. I'm assuming it's excellent. The one that I watched recently was on, um, uh, hold on, when it was drawn to my attention. Do, 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 do. I really, really enjoyed it though. It was super awesome. YouTuber accidentally exposes the scam he's promoting. I show speed. Yeah, really, really good video. Really good video. Don't take my word for it. Take the word of the 6.1 million people who watched it already. Great channel. Anyway, the point is, Luke, do you want to give us the rundown here? Uh, sure. CryptoZoo is an NFT-based game. Nice. Sort of. Sounds legit. We'll get into that in a second. Yeah, CryptoZoo! Uh, where players can earn passive income. Totally. Makes sense. Definitely. Uh, it was initiated and heavily promoted by Logan Paul. In quotes, it's a really fun game that earns you money. Wouldn't that be great? Uh, wow. the player can purchases I play it now? <laughs> no. The player purchases Zoo Token. They use Zoo to purchase eggs of animals. These eggs can be bred and interesting uh, and minted to create unique NFTs. The hatched animals should be some sort of cross between the two. The unique hatched animals would then accrue value. Mm -hmm. This is not new and has basically been done before. There's Crypto Kitties, I think. People in the space have heard of CryptoKitties. This is a fairly major project. Zoo Token launched in July 2021. At the time of launch, $2.5 million worth of eggs had been sold. CryptoZoo was supposed to come out in September of that year. Cough, cough, star citizen. Uh, val value plummeted by October, rose a bit in November, and then crashed again in May, uh, as as crypto things tend to do. The, the <laughs> CryptoZoo website says that it was undergoing upgrades to the core infrastructure of the ecosystem. That's 
the biggest An load of jargon statement. Biggest load of jargon I've ever heard. That's so good. I'm I'm taking that for sure. Why hasn't this happened? Uh, it's just tough, you know. We're we're undergoing upgrades to the core infrastructure of the ecosystem. Yeah, sorry. We we'd love to get back to you, but uh, we're busy. our team is busy upgrading uh, core aspects of the ecosystem <laughs> uh, infrastructure. Um, but plug. How, how are you? <laughs> um, Will Whedon. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> okay, St St Stephen Finst Findison? Findison? I'm so sorry, I guarantee you that's wrong, I apologize. Uh, AKA CoffeeZilla has uploaded several videos criticizing Logan Paul's crypto zoo. He has done similar videos uncovering scams and frauds over the past few years. Uh, these often relate to crypto and NFTs, I'm so surprised. Uh, the criticism. The NFTs initially released were photos that can be easily found on the internet and then edited, just like every NFT. Um, well, every, of that type, I know there's a tech, it's a technology that can be used for other... Yeah, sure. Um, the eggs couldn't be hatched. Bit of an issue when that's the core functionality of the game. Players couldn't get their money back. I'm not surprised, but, you know, it is a thing. And basically, nothing works and the site never fully launched. Big yikes. Logan has blamed the main developer of the project. He said he got involved with the wrong people, uh, made mistakes and missteps, and that there is a new team working on the project now. The dev later said that Logan hired a team, then failed to pay them. Bit of an issue. CoffeeZilla has since been publicly invited to go on Logan's podcast Impulsive to talk about this. Uh, he has declined for now on Twitter, yeah, okay, this is the part where I was like, wait, what? Yeah, he yeah. and Logan he invited Logan first privately, and yeah. then Logan publicly invited him. Yeah. Assuming so that, he can that get wasn't views gonna on come his out podcast. Yeah. Like what? You you didn't think CoffeeZilla was gonna go like, yeah, by the way, I invited this guy first? Like you're getting exposed. Why are you doing more stuff behind the scenes? It's so weird. I mean, these these I mean the the drama Gets more views. The drama gets more views. Yeah, I, I fair think, enough. I think creating is controversy is a feature, not a bug. That is something that he is legitimately very good at, is stirring things. Always right. has been. Uh, CoffeeZilla has been public... Oh, right. Bleh, already did that part. Um, he refuses to fly to his, in quotes, crypto zoo tax haven on New Year's. LOL. Oof. Oof. Yeah. Good stuff. So... Is there? As far as I know, Board Ape is getting, or Board Ape Yacht Club or whatever, is getting sued right now for like, oh really, racism stuff or something. Oh, like the NFT space is crumbling faster than I would have even expected. I heard there's um there's a company. I man, I okay. This is this is I only sort of vaguely remember reading about it. So d take this for what it is. But um, I heard there's a company that specializes in helping you turn your nfts into a tax write-off that you can utilize for like this this year like this tax year because you lost so much because money you on lost it. so much money on them um and apparently business is booming <laughs> oh my god yeah that, honestly it was pretty whoever rough. did that is smart yeah yeah i mean you I, you if you lose money on an investment you absolutely should try to you know get it at least non-taxable um like if the money if the money is lost then it's lost like it's, it's not income that's for sure um so i'm the opposite of that <laughs> yeah yeah pretty rough now this is great i did not know this which is sort of embarrassing yeah. coffeezilla has made a video about me oh really yes it was back when we did that uh nice hash sponsored video and I obviously haven't watched it. I'm very sorry. I I will I will watch it at some point. Nice. Um, so I obviously haven't watched it, but let's go. It is apparently um, focused on the criminal history of the founder of Nice Hash. Oh, um, which I did become aware of after we uploaded that video that was sponsored by Nice Hash. Uh, we did tell you guys after that on the following WAN show, there's actually comments under the video about it. I was just looking, I'm browsing the, com I can't watch the video live, so I'm browsing the comments to see sort of what was in it and what wasn't in it. Um, so people 
apparently a week later, we did address it on WAN show. No, it was not something that I was aware of. And we have not worked with NiceHash since then. We won't work with NiceHash again. Uh, with that said, that doesn't mean, and like I said at the time, it doesn't mean that I haven't used the product. It doesn't mean that I wouldn't use the product. It's been fine the times that I've used it. In fact, I used it today. Uh, we did a video. Uh, the title's going to be Ask Me Why I'm Crypto Mining in 2023. Uh, I know why, and it's great. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I was lazy, and as you will discover later on in the video, it doesn't really matter. So we just we used nice hash to effectively mine as a benchmark. Um, and uh, so hopefully I'm going to watch this video, and it's going to not be too um bad <laughs> but i guess i have that to look forward to after the show <coughs> excuse me yeah it's rough Alrighty, cool we've had uh, a lot of uh sponsorships we've been around for a long time we've had a lot of sponsors we've had a lot of sponsorships that have gone extremely well um companies have grown with us and we've stuck with them for really really extended periods of time yep. we've also had some sponsorships where they didn't go that well and we stopped working with them yep i mean that's the thing that's the guys thing. is i've never pretended to be perfect um i've i've never i've never said like i i and man especially before like we we didn't always have the time to dig deep into every single sponsor and it's it's not a valid excuse period uh which is why we're always striving to do better but we do strive to do better um and you know we hold our we hold our sponsors to a very high standard. If we get complaints from our community that our sponsors are not treating them correctly, we do follow those things up. Um, if it becomes a pattern, we do drop sponsors. We do it on a very regular basis. We also have an official means by which you can provide feedback. Uh, you can suggest future sponsors, companies you'd like to see us work with. You can bring up your concerns about sponsors that we've worked with in the past. Um, and we've, we've suggestions, complaints. Uh, these are threads that I'm going to be enraged if I don't see staff posts in here recently. There you go, December 20th. Thank you, Sven. Uh, these are threads there's that another one. there's Jeff. These are threads we do monitor that we do take extremely seriously. We have dropped sponsors because of feedback in that thread. Absolutely, hundred um, percent. So that's kind of all I've got to say about it. Is yeah, we haven't always gotten it right in the past, um, but we are absolutely always revising our processes and trying to do better. Um, and so hopefully you won't see mistakes like that from us again. But I'm not claiming to be perfect. It's possible something will slip yeah, through the cracks. Or you might, and if you do, let us know. It's possible new information will come to light, and when it does, we will react. I mean, I can tell you guys, the partnership with Anchor slash Eufy slash Soundcore slash you know, uh, Nebula, uh, it's, it's Nebula, right? Their, uh, their projector brand. I don't know. I, I don't want to get this wrong. So Anchor projector brand. Yeah. Nebula. Yeah. yeah, that was that was a six figure source of income for the company. Um, but what you guys can expect from me is if we see the kind of egregious um, anti consumer behavior that we saw from Anchor a number of weeks ago, we will drop them and there will not be any hesitation. You guys saw it. We dropped them live on the show as soon as I figured out what the heck was going on. Um, and that's that's what you can expect. Yeah. What about the VPNs? Um, we haven't done a VPN spot in probably about 18 months. And the truth is that when it comes to VPNs, <sighs> it's complicated. A lot of the ways that they're marketed yeah. is the biggest problem. But we didn't do that. Yeah. We marketed them as what they are, a tool in your security toolbox that is useful for some things. And it is. I still use PIA, if not daily, at least weekly. Maybe not weekly, at least monthly. I still use PIA regularly. I still have an account that I pay for. And are they are they trustworthy? I guess that's the problem, right? Is you shouldn't that, act like any of them are. Yeah. 
because they they all have the ability to track all the things that you're doing and they can say they won't store whatever but what we got really tired of is the acquisition carousel yeah um and okay i guess yeah i guess we're about to get in pretty deep into the the internal weeds here mm. but our response to the last acquisition event was you're going for it yeah i'm going for it was to yeah. strongly consider creating our own vpn we did okay well i wasn't gonna go that far but well, we did. i got it you're, you're gonna talk about stuff my team does i can give my team props all right they did it they pulled it together all they right. built it it worked the float plane team built float vpn yeah. in like 72 hours sick. It was actually like really good. It was really it was fast. surprisingly good. And it was linked through Floatplane. We built this whole system so that it was rewarded to accounts that were already in Floatplane. So we were automatically going to give everyone on Floatplane free VPN access. And to, to like to load test and make sure that it was working. So that was going to be the beta. Like it was pretty cool. Yeah. And then we <laughs> looked into the legal stuff of it because we were myself and my team. And this is my fault and my problem. I will admit this. It was exciting. It was an interesting new thing to work on. Yeah, it's cool tech. Like It, it is pretty cool tech. There's yeah. a lot of really cool op open source systems floating around. Uh, and we just dove head first. And then as we were like kind of coming up for air, I was working on the legal stuff. And lawyers were like, yeah, no. They were pretty clear about that. Yeah. Like if I, if I lived in like, you know. Jaden's like, I recently had to strip that code out of the front end. Yeah. <laughs> it was like like it it was there like we did this yeah it was working <laughs> yeah sorry yeah um yeah lawyers were basically like <sighs> even if you try to do everything as right as possible with the nature of what a VPN is someone is going to oh man I don't know how much this I want to say just, just because there's certain care. words that I would have to say that are like not cool I don't know just say them I so guess. they they said they said something like I'll like, bleep I'll bleep every other word. <laughs> No, no, no. It's fine. I'll try to. Is mine working? <laughs> it looked like it worked. Yeah, I think, I think it did. Um, so the lawyer was basically like, there, "There's. We've talked about this, right? There's, there's what is legal and what you think is morally fine. So you might be okay with blocking ads on YouTube or whatever. You might be okay with pirating a video game that you can't afford to buy anyways or whatever. You might be okay with that." Okay, the the blocking ads on YouTube is not illegal. Yeah. Um, that's why I jumped. But to let's pirating say video let's games. say pirating a video. But so, game. Say you're doing downloading, something downloading was, an MP3. Yeah. Say you're doing something yeah. that is technically illegal, but most people are not going to be that angry about. Sure. Maybe people use your VPN for that sometimes. Yeah. Instead of totally okay things, and maybe you're not that upset by it. Maybe they download something other than a Linux ISO or a World of Warcraft installer. What if someone uses it for child? Right. I think you can say the word pornography. I don't like putting those two together. That's fair. It makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, that's fair. And the second the lawyer said that, I was like, wow, I'm uncomfortable. Yep. And they're like, what if you knew someone was doing that on your service? Ooh. But it's in your TOS that you won't stop them from using your service. Ooh. Do you want to be the person that defends them? Do you want to be the person person that has to defend them on like a legal no, level i don't think we ever do you have to be the this. person that wants to defend them from governments trying to get their information i was super and we busy. were like whoa no <laughs> i was super busy at this period so i was basically just getting like small updates i think the only update i got was we're not doing it yeah so i was like we're working on it it's <laughs> awesome it's functioning we're gonna give it a beta all these full plane users and then i think we were like driving in the car some way and somewhere and i was like yeah by the way the whole project's axed we're just done because I was like, there's just no way. They also said that even if it was as insulated as possible from this company, yeah, there's inevitably going to be similar ownership. Yeah. So they'll they'll come at you regardless. Like it was it was scary for a bunch of reasons, and there was many individual reasons that by themselves would have axed the project. Yeah. And there was like a bunch of them. That's why I was like, there's no point in having this discussion. No, like, sane person is going to want to go along with this. So it's just the project. Yeah. Is and done. it's not like you could just create <laughs> terms of service that are like, okay, here's how it's going to be. We're cool if you're cool, bro. <laughs> if you do these illegal things, we're chill. Yeah. But if you do these illegal things, we're going to turn you over. Yeah. Yeah. Like, how are we supposed to be the arbiters of that? So yeah. it's a lot easier for us to just say, forget about it i gotta tell you though the money sure looked good oh my goodness <laughs>
when you do the math, man, we were like, we're rich. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> like you see, you see the sales that people do on VPN accounts. Yeah. And you're like, wow. Like, How can they make any money? And, and then you, you see the affiliate push that they're doing. Like they're just sponsoring everybody it's yep. crazy and it's like how, how is this possibly profitable and then i'm not going to say who it was mostly because i don't remember uh <laughs> but there was a vpn out there that exposed the amount of users that they had and they had free users and paid users they exposed the amount of users that they had under both categories and they showed the amount of bandwidth going through at all points in time yeah and they showed where all of their individual servers were around the entire world and if you know a bunch of stuff about server hosting, you can kind of figure out who those servers are hosted with. So you can get a really crazily accurate and like costing. Well, and especially if you're our team who probably has rack space in like those, some of those data servers. centers yeah, <laughs> already. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, well, and there's even, they're, they're, they got really specific. Yeah, so it's you Winscribe. Out, that's the one. That is the one, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so you could figure out a lot of like, how much money they're probably making, how much money this is probably costing them. And like, no, obviously it's not free. To be able to have this, you need like a mesh of servers around the world. There's a decent yeah. amount of startup cost, yada, yada, yada. But like the second you get a reasonable amount of users, whoa. It's a money printing machine. Big money. I can totally understand why people Monster get into money. it. Yeah. For the money. Yeah. And then there's all the downsides and it's like, whoa. This is not something that I want to help with, really. So we left actually a pretty monstrous amount of money on the table and we left a project that was like ready for beta testing. Like it was ready to go. It was actually yeah. quite sophisticated. It was it was good. Yeah. It was made well. The people that worked on it were proud of it and they should have been. Like we, to be clear, we didn't code it from scratch. We nope. did what you should do, and, and we, we used... leaned on a lot of open source tools for it. For sure, yeah. Uh, but that's part of maintaining at least some some amount of facade of of transparency. And yeah, we wanted to use the open source tools yes. because then people could see how it worked more more better. Um, yeah, and you can like I think we've even made a video of like this is how you make your own VPN. Like you can do it yourself, stuff like that. But I mean, we we yeah. had some I. I had some kind of cool ideas for how we could differentiate as well. Like, you know, trust no one, but here's why you can trust us. Um, you know, like I, I, I had the idea of like creating some kind of, uh, some kind of legal framework for uh, guaranteeing that the ownership would never change from like, oh yeah, me and I Yvonne and Luke or something like that. Like, basically, it's it would be the trust us, bro, terms of service. Um, which isn't perfect, but if we're willing to get out there personally and say, no, no, it's all on us instead of just like, well, I don't know. I mean, it's all good, but we might sell and then who knows who's going to own it after. Right. Cause that's, I don't think you finished that conversation, but that was a problem that you had with some VPNs that were sponsoring us Yep, is because we'd be happy with where they are at, but then they would sell. It's like, well, all the user data just changed hands. Now what? And maybe it changed hands to a group that someone isn't cool with. Maybe it did. Maybe it didn't. I don't know. Who knows? It's I don't just know. it's just an awkward situation to be in. And I just got kind of tired of it. So yep. yeah. But yeah, that there's the there's the float VPN story. Uh, yeah. Man, should we should we tell some should we should we continue story time? What what else? There's probably lots. I don't know. Should, should we talk about the uh, Should we talk about the time that Linus Media Group got an, an offer for acquisition? No. Ah, uh, well. <laughs> I mean, we could. It clearly said no. So there you go. Uh, what clearly said no? Yeah. You you clearly said no. No. Well, I mean, oh, we didn't yeah. get acquired. Yeah, so we, like, we didn't we didn't get acquired. But yeah. uh, you know, maybe maybe we'll talk about that later. Uh, for now, uh, if you guys have anything you want to talk about on the show, it's a perfect time to send in a merch message. Oh, oh, we launched a new product. I have to address um, while you figure that out. Yeah. I have to address. Someone just said Float VPN sank. That is untrue. It went into the dry dock and it got decommissioned. Okay. Yeah. It was fine. Yeah. We took it out of the water. Oh, he's he's stripping on stream. Let's go. No, no you're not allowed to strip on stream. <laughs> this is not stripping. This is just he's uh, reconfiguring yeah. uh, fabric objects below the yeah. table. <laughs> it's all good. He's what is it? Sorry. Uh, you're working on the eco infrastructure of the yeah, database. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
I want to find the line. I want to say it specifically. Prove I'm not wearing pants. <laughs> that should be that should be the uh oh did the knee come up? Uh maybe. <laughs> Where is it? I gotta find it. Okay, here it is. Undergoing upgrades to the core infrastructure of the ecosystem. He's undergoing upgrades to the core infrastructure of the leg covering system. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Perfect. Hey, we launched pajama pants. Yeah. Woo! Those actually look really comfy. Yeah, they're super comfy. Only the only the finest pajama pants for LTT store uh, shoppers. Uh, here's where's my. Uh, dang it, where's my uh, where's my talking points about it? You know what? It doesn't matter. I'll just go on the site. LTTstore.com. Let's go. The oh. pajama pants. New plaid. Oh. Oh, that's right. Did we even talk about new plaid yet? No. Oh yeah, there's new. There's oh, oh, for crying out loud. It's a good. It's a great Buy site. Buy a screwdriver. Good site. Good site. <laughs> oh yeah. So we've got all these different colors of plaids Whoa, now. Oh, there's like a bunch of them. Woo! Pretty fun. The plaid flannel is extremely well reviewed. Um, every once in a while, I will just read through reviews on our site because it's it's nice. Um, and the number of people that are like. Yeah, it's expensive, but um, I ha I've had this plaid flannel for like the last 25 years and I never thought I'd find something that could replace it, but this one replaced it. It's, it's, it's pretty awesome. Um, really, really stoked on that one. Uh, also, the pajama pants. Not gonna lie, we, um, we went back and forth on the pricing for this one based on our kind of margin targets it should have probably been more like 44.99 to 49.99 but even though they're like amazing here touch my leg oh you're not you're that is pretty nice i can you want me to go higher yeah yeah you I mean, you, yeah you can go higher uh <clears throat> even though they're like <laughs> even though they're like amazing it seemed like a lot so we ended up with 39.99 uh, they're a blend of rayon from bamboo, merino wool, and spandex. They really make you feel like you're wearing nothing at all. Oh. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. They're actually quite flattering, too, in my humble opinion. They look sharp. I like the gray. Yeah! Does it say what color they are? It's like... They're gray. Yeah, it's a gray. Yeah. Yeah! So, super stoked on the pajama pants. Um, plaid. Yeah, I like my. I have the like original red plaid. I like it quite a bit. Yeah, it's nice. All right. Uh, what else are we? What, oh yeah, let's. Uh, Should we do standard sponsors? Oh uh, sure, sure. Yeah, let's get those. Let's get those done. And then we got a bunch more great topics for you guys today. The show is brought to you by C Sonic. C Sonic's Prime TX 1600 watt power supply is a great choice for a high performance system. That's right. I mean, it has everything. 80 plus titanium rating, that means less wasted power. Their hybrid mode, which turns the fan off, keeping your power supply silent when load is low enough. It's backed by a 12 year warranty. It's got modular cables, high quality fan. If you're building a new system and looking for a power supply, can't recommend it enough. It's very expensive though. So fortunately, Seasonic has a whole lineup ranging from all the way to entry level and or all the way from entry level to the very, very top of the line. Uh, can't say enough good things about Seasonic. These guys are absolute chads. Like who else would have the stones, okay, to help you configure a lab grade power supply tester so that you can better compare their products against everything else. If you're not- It's a pretty Chad move. If that doesn't say confident, I don't know what else does. I, I have Seasonic power supplies that are like ancient technology at this point and they just keep going. I don't know. It's not, I'm not recommending that you use like super old power supplies, but they have 12 year warranties. And like, I have power supplies that are legitimately that old or older and they're still fine and they're from Seasonic. So I don't know. Heck yeah. I will throw my personal badge on that. The show is also brought to you by Manscaped. Their ultra premium collection is an all-in-one skin and hair care kit designed to keep the everyday man covered from head to toe. 
or less covered, as it were. There's the two-in-one shampoo and conditioner, their body wash infused with aloe vera, hydrating body spray, deodorant, and a free gift, moisturized lip balm. So simplify your man maintenance with Manscaped. And best of all, all of their products in the Ultra Premium Collection are cruelty-free, paraben-free, and vegan. Just visit manscaped.com tech or click the link down below for 20% off and free shipping. Finally, speaking of longtime sponsors... The show is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace. <laughs> really, Linus? They're, they're only like... <laughs> a little spaced out there. I'm trying to think. Were it's they been a long our time. first or second direct sponsor? Like non-hardware? Yeah. Oh, non-hardware. I'm almost certain they're the first. Corsair was the first hardware. Corsair was the very first sponsor ever of anything. Yeah. So Corsair was first, but I think Squarespace might have been... I think they were the first WAN show sponsor. WAN show was really hard to sell back in the day. Now sponsors can't get enough of it. If you go back far enough, WAN show used to only have two sponsor spots. And now it has three because we couldn't do more WAN shows. Um, and sponsors were like kicking down our door trying to pay for WAN show. So eventually, I think it was Nick at the time, not Colton in charge of the biz team at that point. He was just like, look. You are leaving literally 50% of the revenue for WAN show on the table by not just taking another sponsorship. And I was like, all right, we'll try it one week. And then I was hooked. <laughs> hooked on Squarespace. Yeah. With Squarespace. Making a website doesn't have to be hard. You can have your website up and running in a matter of hours. I mean, if you're good, you can have it up and running in a matter of minutes. Squarespace has award-winning templates that will help your website stand out. So say goodbye to drab GeoCities-inspired hellscapes and say hello to Squarespace scapes. Plus, if you're interested in how your website is doing, they have built-in tools to help find out what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. Both our LinusMediaGroup.com and LTX Expo websites were built quickly using Squarespace. And if you get stuck, they have a 24-7 support team that is ready to help you out. Go to squarespace.com slash WAN and you can get 10% off today. By if you're good, he mostly means like at typing text to go on the screen and putting pictures in places like you don't have to you don't have to be like skilled like CSS, let's go. yeah yeah you don't have to do any of that stuff you just have to be like this is the name of my company this is what we do here's a picture <laughs> um all right wait did i explain how to use merch messages or did i just get totally derailed and start talking about how comfortable these pajama pants are <laughs> if you buy something on ltt store in the checkout when we're live there's a place to submit a merch message uh dan might reply to you down here or you might just get if you just want like a shout out or whatever that'll come up down here sometimes he curates things for us to talk about later on in the show but first we're gonna have to talk about some more topics here should we should we do the ltx weekly updates really quick no i think we got to do new york passes right okay. to repair bill after neutering <laughs> it rossman's <laughs> and rightly so the digital fair repair act has become the first right to repair bill in the U.S. that has been signed into law by New York State Governor Kathy Hochul. I don't know if you pronounce that. This is after this is months after bipartisan majorities passed it through the state legislature. Uh, note: President Biden did issue an executive order last year which directs federal agencies to issue right to repair rules, but this is the first right to repair bill to actually be signed into law. The bill requires electronics OEMs to provide manuals, diagrams, diagnostic tools, and parts to product owners and repair shops. <sighs> but while many right to repair advocates, including iFixit CEO Kyle Weens, have celebrated the fact that the bill passed at all, Others are criticizing the heavy modifications that were made to the bill thanks to lobbying efforts by trade groups like TechNet, whose members include Apple, sorry, that's the wrong finger, Apple, Amazon, Google, Meta, Snap, HP, GM, Toyota, it's basically everybody. Um, certain products and industries are exempted, for one thing, including home appliances, why? Yeah. Motor vehicles, why? Definitely shouldn't be that either. Medical devices, you why honestly why off-road equipment that's yeah well i mean john deere's got to protect their margin somehow right there, there was definitely lobbying there and business to business or business to government products not sold by retailers so basically any direct sales 
to a large volume buyer. It also added that OEMs may provide assemblies of parts rather than individual components when the risk of improper installation heightens the risk of injury. So I guess we just need to buy an entire $800 laptop motherboard instead of a $20 cooler because those fins could be really sharp. I guess, I mean, I was outraged when I found out, remember the iMac Pro debacle? I was outraged when I found out that you couldn't just get a motherboard. Oh no, a motherboard includes a CPU and RAM. What, because I'm too incompetent to plug in a CPU and RAM? I mean, never mind that we did break it in the first place, but I was willing to pay for a new one if I broke it. The law will also only apply to new products sold for the first time in New York on or after July 1st, 2023. So basically... It has no fangs, doesn't apply to most of the most important segments, and uh, there's ways that they can work around it and basically not change anything. So it's a bunch of fluff. I do still think that attitudes are shifting. The fact that Apple introduced their home repair program at all, the fact that Microsoft started discussing right to repair mm -hmm. at all. Is it, is it Dell with the super cool laptop? Dell with Project Luna, the fact yeah. that that's happening at all is good yes. and it's progress but this setback shows that we have to keep the pressure on and that lobbying is effective and that lobbying is also effective lobbying money rights is gross. laws it sure is it's super gross and that that should be bipartisan because it's gross in every direction well, someone was asking why only in new york because in america it's basically 52 small countries as far as I can tell. And this is just based on my experience dealing with tax law in the U.S. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little confusing. It outsiders. is. As far as I know, it's confusing to insiders too, though. So. It is wild how different the experience of being an American can be. Like three meters away that way. That, I, that's about nine feet. I know <laughs> of American companies that think that American tax law is so confusing. Major companies that you have used, I pretty much guarantee it, that find tax law in America to be so confusing that their official stance when their company was coming up was to completely ignore all of it. And when different sections of the states, because there's like a billion of them because it goes down to like counties and stuff individually. Yeah, um, really can. Would get mad at them for not paying their taxes properly. They would just ask them how to do it and then do it moving forward and then never update it until that area got mad about it because they're doing it wrong now and then would send them a new letter because they decided that it would cost them less money to deal with the fines than it would working with a company who kept track of all of it and then took money for doing that. Our chief financial officer Crazy. doesn't have the um I don't know I don't know what to call it the 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 stress tolerance to take a a build a war chest and just pay fines kind of approach to that stuff. We actually do try to do things properly and yeah. proactively. Um but that that is a But it's really hard. That is a legitimate approach that has been used yep. by multi-billion dollar companies. I, I get I I'm get asked kidding. on a regular basis. Linus, why don't you guys have a shipping DC in the States? Why don't you have a ship why don't you have a shipping DC in Europe? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Because to do it properly is really, really hard. Taxes are hyper complicated. Really hard. Our accounting department is Someone, someone Five in, people now. Someone in Flowplane chat said there's 6,000 tax jurisdictions that they need to keep track of. Yeah, and the documentation for it is atrocious. Like, consider... Oh, okay, here. Some counties in the U.S. still send out physical mail to local stores to tell them when taxes update. Well, I'm clearly not going to get that mailer. Like... Yeah. yeah. Well, I was I was going to say consider how like broken the processes are for something as simple as, you know, getting your ID or even like a library card in many municipalities. Well, it's not like it's it's not like they put their A team on the the tax documentation. <laughs> There just isn't an they, A team. They can just fine you, so why would they care? Yeah, cuz they ultimately don't care. That's the Man, that's really frustrating. The fact that they can just kick it back to you and say, well, it's your fault for not understanding it. Here's your bill. It's like outrageous. Um, 
California is one that I particularly take issue with their approach. California seems to think that as a foreign national, I am somehow obligated to pay them income tax. Hmm. That's that's a new one. And so um, as a foreign national um, running a foreign incorporated entity, um, they seem to think that if some proportion of our income comes from California-based entities, that they are entitled to income tax. From you personally? From my company. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, it's still messed up. But... To which I would say, okay. um, under what f authority? <laughs> like, what are you going to do? Canada's not, you're not, you're, Canada's not going to extradite me to California. Yeah, but you travel there sometimes. I could just not. I stopped traveling to China. I don't go to China anymore after they abducted the Michaels. I'm just like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? I love how casually it's just like, remember when they abducted the Michaels? <laughs> well, I, know did. I know exactly what you're talking they about. They did. I just, yeah. They were like, hey, that completely justified apprehension of a Huawei executive. Um, we didn't like it because we're an authoritarian state. So we're just going to casually abduct some Canadians and not give them back until you just say, yeah, it's all cool. Laws don't apply to Chinese nationals. So what? Yeah. Yep. That do be a thing. Yep. They're back now, which is good, but like, I'm just not going to go there anymore. That's what happens, China. You don't get Linus anymore. That's right. <laughs> I, I I even still have a valid visa. I can go there for like another four years. I mean, based on that, I've said this now and mentioned Winnie the Pooh, totally out of context. Yeah. I probably shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we go there together. Instead of the Michaels, it becomes the people whose names start with L. They just, yeah. <laughs> they just take both of us. <laughs> the Linuses and Lukes. <laughs> That's a big L right there. <laughs> and a small L. We got them both. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness yeah okay uh we did that one i'm gonna do the ltx update really quick just because i i'm certain we're gonna forget hold on i want to make something really clear okay um to our to our chinese viewers and oh, the people yeah. living in china in general fair enough obviously i hope this is obvious i bear you no ill will whatsoever none at all but the ccp can go f itself and that is not and and to be clear that is not exclusive to the ccp um i don't i think it would be hard for me to think of uh, uh i don't think i can off the top of my head think of a world government or a world governing body that frankly shouldn't just go f itself um there's probably some somewhere i don't know i don't know i remember for a while there uh, this is, this was quite a while ago and I didn't look into it deep enough and someone's probably going to point out some crazy human rights violation that I didn't know about yeah. and I'm going to look like a bad person. But quite a while ago, I used to think the government of Estonia was pretty cool. That's going to sound really random. The huh. reason why was they, they digitized a bunch of their governance right. and got rid of a massive amount of cost, which when government has cost, it means you have pay money cost yeah uh, so they got rid of a ton of cost by digitizing a bunch of it um and they automated like huge amounts of their governance and then they started exporting these governance tools as a export of the country so they started making money from it and i'm like this is cool i don't know what happened with that that was a long time ago i know basically nothing about the country i just thought that one specific thing was cool i don't i I don't want to, I'm not dying on this sword. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm not interested in that. I just thought that was kind of neat because yeah, E Estonia or whatever, because I, uh, you, you, you try to do like so many different things with government and it's so tedious and it's like, oh, I have to fax something or I have to like go into this office physically to pay this like $20 tax bill. You ready for like, another story time? Sure. Yeah. Okay. I got a new car. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I imported it from oh yeah the, the story, province yeah. of Quebec. 
Okay. <laughs> anytime, if you're if you're from outside of Canada, anytime you touch Quebec in any way, it's a disaster. <laughs> anytime. Again, shout out the people of Quebec. Yeah. Love you very much. Great. We employ two of them. They're fantastic. Very but, happy with both of them on the team. But <laughs> some of the Quebec government policies actually Woo. seem to be written by idiots. And uh, yeah. Yep. I they, mean, they screw over people in Quebec more than anything. You hear about giveaways that include yeah. Canada and they're like everywhere in North America except specifically Quebec. <laughs> Like, oh, that's not because companies hate you. Yeah, it's because your government hates you. Yeah, it's brutal. Anyway, um, oh, so is Quebec the California of Canada? No, I wouldn't say they're the California. The weather isn't very good. Yeah, um, what so would much. you say Quebec is? Alberta is definitely there. our Texas. Yep, I don't think there's a lot of other. Easy I mean, parallels. Quebec's sort of like they're like California's in the sense that they just like want to secede all the time. Not recently, mind you. So does Texas. Yeah, so does Texas. Yeah, but Texas is the... Alberta also wants to secede all the time. So, like, the Alberta-Texas yeah, that's, that's relationship right. is clearly... Uh, Vancouver is Washington. Or the BC is Washington. We've got people I saying think. they're the Florida. I could kind of see that. They just kind of do their own thing. Florida. But you don't hear, like, Quebec man has wrestled an alligator. Yeah, that's that's true. That's true. Probably because it would have said, uh, an homme... The Quebec, uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, it would be in French, so you wouldn't have understood it. Fair enough. Um, anyway, I know soda mousse. Let's let's go let's go back to story time. <laughs> I imported a car from Quebec. There were a couple of compelling reasons to do this. Yeah, it is a secondhand EV, uh, which means that um, this particular unit, because it's secondhand, but with only about thirteen hundred kilometers. Pretty okay, epic. so that is like less than a thousand miles on it. So it's a used car with less than a thousand miles on it. Because it's used, it is exempt from um, PST, provincial sales tax, which is what, about 5% or something like that? Uh, I don't know, but I'll check. Also, because it's used and it's... 7%. Over the... Yeah, 7%. Okay, so I save 7% right out of the gate from it being secondhand. Also, because it's used... Uh, it's a used EV. Oh, wait. If it, it's a used EV, so it is not subject to PST. Also, because it is secondhand, it is not subject to the luxury tax, which saved me... Um, I forget what the actual amount is in BC on cars. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Hold on. BC luxury tax calculator. Um, <clears throat> a lot. Quite a few thousands of dollars. So importing this car from Quebec made a ton of financial sense, even though it cost like $4,000 to ship it here. Like it was way, that was way less than the amount that I saved on it. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so because it's from out of province, even though it's a car that was shipped to Canada, to a Canadian and registered in Canada, because it was registered in another province, I have to go through some, some rigmarole, okay? So I have to get it a safety inspection done before I can register it in BC. It's like, fair enough. Uh, let me tell you, that was a quick inspection. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's got a thousand miles on it. And it's an EV. And it's an EV. What could go wrong? So pretty quick inspection. So that was good. Um, so I went and I got that done. And I went to, in, in BC, we have this uh, Crown Corporation monopoly on automotive insurance called ICBC. And basically the theory is that by having it be a crown corporation, which means a government owned entity, um, they can um, spread the, the, the load of insurance claims over the entire population of the province, uh, lowering everyone's rates. In practice, particularly when the BC Liberals were in power, that is certainly not how it worked out. Um, the NDP have actually done a much, much better job of getting our premiums down over the last three, four years, yeah. which kudos to them for that. To be fair, it was helped by almost no one being on the roads for two years. That didn't hurt. Yep. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's true. But I mean, hey, if the savings get passed along to me, that's supposed to be how it works. Yeah. And they did. They literally sent out checks. So great. Right. So anyway, um, in theory, that's how it's supposed to work. But in practice, as you guys know, um, in the absence of competition, well, you tend to 
find complacency. And the way that um, I wish government agencies worked was that their constituents were the customer. But the way that government agencies actually work is that, um, you know, whatever minister is in charge of that particular agency is the customer and they don't seem to have any accountability to anybody whatsoever. So you end up getting treated like an inconvenience as opposed to a valued customer. So here's what happened. When I went in to get my vehicle registered and insured in BC, I had to bring three documents. One was the inspection report. One was the registration of the vehicle from the previous owner in Quebec. And the third was the bill of sale showing that I had purchased the vehicle, paid my GST. So that's the federal, the general sales tax, paid my GST and um, like that I was me. You know, that, 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 that I was the one who was supposed to own it so that when I registered, it would be registered to the right person. Here's what happened. Okay, so we've got, we've got a local billionaire, uh, Jimmy Pattison, pretty well known for his philanthropic works. And uh, he plays a mean, uh, what does he play, trumpet or something like that? He plays with the Vancouver Symphony Orchestra from time to time. Really? For real. I went to see, like, I forget if it was like Star Wars Night or something like that. And at the beginning, they were like, by the way, we have a special performer tonight. The one and only Jimmy Pattison is sitting. And he, he stands up. Guy's a pro. Uh, anyway, yeah, right. Uh, just like rich people hobbies, I guess. Yeah, I think I'll true. just, I think I'll just casually. Okay, like I don't know how internationally famous the Vancouver Symphony Orchestra is, but they're 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 pretty f-ing baller. Like they're pretty good. They're, they're great. I yeah. actually really like going um, to see them. So you just like you casually, local, you should go. Yeah, just just casually plays with the van- with the VSO. And mm. uh, this was a number of years back. I don't know if he still does. He's pretty old now. Anyway, the point is that. You know how he owns uh, many car dealerships. Many, many, many. Okay, yeah. so Jim Pattison Group is the the car dealership like conglomerate Mega, that he owns, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay, and within Jim Pattison Group, you've got Jim Pattison Toyota, Jim Pattison, you know, whatever else, like all the, all the different like sub brands, and sometimes I think he has more than one dealership for a particular brand in different locations. So it was basically like that. Okay, the. I'm going to give away something about the car here, I guess. But the the registration... So someone's already guessed it. Oh, really? I mean, there's been a ton of guesses, so I will say that, and no one will have any idea what that means. Okay. But. So the the registration was to Group Lausanne, and then um, the the bill of sale was That's from... Give, this is going to give a lot away. Porsche Lausanne. Uh, okay, that's way more on the nose than I even thought you were going, but all right. <laughs> yeah. And basically, because those two documents didn't match, ICBC said that they could not establish continuity for the ownership right. of the vehicle. Yeah. Because they said it was a different entity selling me the vehicle than it was registered to prior. So... The broker that I was at, now to be clear, guys, it could have been any vehicle. It's a used car. So don't get too smart here. The point is, I I worked every angle. It's a really nice used car. (laughs) I worked every angle with the broker, okay? Every angle I could think of. Uh, Can they send you an email confirming that they are the same entity? Can you go on their website and see that they are the same entity? Because because again, there. the Jim Pattison thing is not—it's obviously not Jim Pattison, but it's effectively the same deal. It's super obvious that it's the same entity. Yes, it, it, there, it's, I like every level. It's right on the website. Yeah. The only reason that you can't establish continuity is because you refuse to look at it. Yeah. Um, we got as far as so what they wanted was they wanted them to create new documents, and I was like, these are legal documents. The entity that sold it to me is called this. They're not and gonna, the entity it was registered to was called this. They're not going to legally rename their company. No, they're not yeah. going to do that. So that's not a real solution. So you need to give me a real solution. Um, I even I even pointed out that if you go on the gov, like the dot bc, dot gov, dot qc or whatever it is, dot qc, dot gov, like the official government of Quebec website, and you do a search for Group Lausanne, it has all of the dealerships that are part. They're like, we can't look at that. I'm like, no, 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 no. It's literally government registered. They literally scanned this and sent it to you. I know you've seen it. I can't see it. No, you no, you did see it, though. Can you see that they're the same thing? I cannot. Like, f*** you. 
Like, for real, though. F*** you. Like, Ugh. you do know, you do see it. This is not a problem. The dealership said that they had shipped a vehicle into BC literally five weeks ago. And it wasn't a problem at all. The documentation was exactly the same. There was no problem. Basically, what I think we ran into was someone who kind of misunderstood. And the documents were in French, right? So it's going so to be easy like, to misunderstand. Kind of misunderstood a little. Sure. The, the... Gave an answer. And then once they gave an answer, was unable to back down. Yeah. Yeah. And you run into that a lot in bureaucracies. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like a lot. And it's so frustrating. If they were customer service driven, they would be looking for a way to help you. But because they are not customer service driven, they are looking for a way to, I don't know, justify their own existence on the other end of the phone line. They, they wasted between my son, who I thought this was a 10 minute errand and brought with me, uh, the oh. agent at the auto plan broker. Me and them, they managed to waste probably about eight hours of people's time going oh, back and forth and back combined. and forth and yeah. back and forth and back and forth on all these different potential solutions. What they ultimately so settled crazy. on was that they wanted a letter signed by like a signatory officer of Group Lazon that said that they were the same company and it could not be faxed or emailed, or docu-signed, or anything. It had to be the original Register document. The, the auto plan broker's like, this is unprecedented. Why can't you fax it directly to us? That is like, that is a legally valid way of transmitting a document, right? <laughs> and they're like, it cannot. Basically, what they decided was they didn't want me to get my car insured that day. And th this is where, ultimately, I come back to what you were talking about, where digitizing this kind of stuff is a is a customer first yeah, way of dealing because, with things. And this is something that we talked about when he was first telling me this is like the argument for not replacing these systems with automation is that the people should be able to handle those types of situations. But your name starts with an N, you know who you are, f you. For real. Honestly. <laughs> is that the person who was working? Yeah. Okay. Um yeah, but like if you are going to be completely inflexible and work and, and not be helpful or provide solutions or anything, if you're just going to be super, super hardline on all this kind of stuff. You might as well be an AI. There is no benefit to you being a person. Yep. It just makes it harder for everybody else. So this is this is to bring it all the way back. This is why I thought what Estonia was doing was cool. <laughs> I have no idea if they've continued to do it. Maybe it's gone to trash since then. It's been like at least a Maybe minimum. they're using it to oppress people. Maybe. I don't know. I have no clue. It's been at least six years since I looked into it. But it was like really cool when they first started doing it. And I was really annoyed about some very specific government stuff when I heard they were doing this. So I was like, yeah, it's awesome. Um, but yeah, they basically employed a bunch of developers doing high skilled tasks instead of people filing boring paperwork that they probably didn't want to do anyways and then they exported that started making money from it saved anyone everyone in the country a ton of money taxes were able to be lowered they they if i remember i don't know i'm gonna say a bunch of stuff that's wrong so i'm gonna stop here but it was cool yeah another unrelatable linus millionaire problem no getting stuck at the dmv is literally a meme it's the most relatable thing ever it's super relatable these kinds of systems just I also so are designed to be inconvenient. Yeah. And nobody likes having their time wasted. Do you? Do you? No. No. Jaden Jaden also said in chat, uh, I had a similar situation with my current car. Uh, bought from a dealership in Sask while I lived in BC. The dealership couldn't provide satisfactory evidence that they owned it. I ended up having to see a lawyer to sort it out. I'm so sorry to hear that, Jaden. Yeah. Yeah. Jaden does pretty well. I don't believe he's a millionaire. But he definitely, I mean, it's, this is great. Maxis Blitz problems. says, so relatable it was in Zootopia. Yeah, exactly. The sloths in Zootopia. Yeah, yeah. So funny. Yeah. So funny. Oh, that's like, such, I actually really love that movie. That is pretty good. Yeah, this is great. Ga Everyone's piping in with their stories. Ganja Gremlin says three trips to my DMV to get an Illinois license when moving from Massachusetts. 
Yeah, hundred like percent. How, how is that necessary? There's how no is, way that's necessary. How is that even possible? Like you know, honestly, this is one of the things that really like blows me away when because here at least getting identification is really painless and easy. But like you still have to go in physically in in America. You you hear people talk about how needing to present ID is some kind of like voter suppression or whatever else, which I think is wild because taking a vote without ID is. Wild seems to nuts me. to me. I don't, um, I don't know how it works down there, so I, I've never but, wanted to voice. So this it, is it the seems, problem. Yeah, the problem is that there are just unbelievable hoops, like they were talking about, to get ID in, in the, the states, states in many cases. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's the issue. So it's one of those problems. Well, there that, shouldn't be. They need to fix that problem. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I don't see why anyone disagrees that you should need to present ID to do something as important as voting, what we should all agree on is that getting ID should be the most painless, inexpensive process in the world. Everybody needs identification. What do you mean you don't have identification? And if you can't get it, or it's hard, or it's unaffordable, or whatever else, that is a fundamental problem. What does government even exist for? Yeah. If not libraries, roads, What's the other one? Schools. <laughs> Libraries, roads, and schools. Well, I guess defense too. But like, for real, that's like fundamental. It's basic. Ugh. Ugh. All right. What else are we going to talk about? We've gotten a little off topic today. Sorry, I'm, I'm like back on my, on my e-Estonia thing. They have a whole website just called <laughs> e-Estonia. Okay, Luke's they have e identity, so they have ID cards, mobile IDs, e residency, smart ID. This is all done. Blah 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 blah. blah. They have all this, all this stuff that they do. E tax, e banking, e business registration. You don't even have to go in to register a business. You just do it online. That's amazing. Why would you need to? The amount of crap that you have to get a lawyer to like yeah. do paperwork for you. Why would? Why? When, why should you need to? It should just be as simple as saying, "Yeah, this, 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 and this." Yeah. is wild. And if you already have all of these things that are digitized, then they already have access to it. Everything's good, right? Like, who cares? E-health record, e-ambulance, e-prescriptions, blah, 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 all this different type of stuff. It's great. I've heard some criticism saying that it wouldn't work as well in very large countries. Estonia is a very small country. Sure. Doesn't then, matter for Estonia, then though. Then build it better. Yeah. For them, it's great. Does it like you can't you can't use that criticism against Estonia themselves? And they even recognize they have this thing, the evolution of digital public service. And the first step is called pain, <laughs> La lack of money, resources, or manpower. And they're like understanding digitization can solve can resolve these issues by increasing accessibility to services, add support for it increase it literacy that's super cool yada, yada, yada. tech travis and twitch chat says i had my wallet stolen two years ago i haven't been able to get my id because my social security card was stolen with my wallet it's a pain in the butt to get id in the states the that's fact so that crazy. we we actually have a similar number in the states it's called a sin number social insurance number i think is what it's called yeah uh, so we have a similar we have a similar system in canada the fact that this unchangeable number that is like a huge security problem if anyone gets their hands on and yet you have to give it to basically f***ing everyone is a system is wild to me. I mean, I had to sign something a little while ago, okay? And I'm like signing it and I'm like, what does this do? What does this do? <laughs> yeah. Whoever's going to look at this has no idea who I am. No <laughs> idea. I mean, the, the idea of signing something as validation comes from like small town culture. And, and where signatures everyone knows are so everyone. We're the, bank, easy to we're sign the banker, the, the, the one person who works behind the, <laughs> the banker, yeah. The banker <laughs> actually knows what John Hancock's John Hancock is supposed to look like. Anything else. I, it's utterly irrelevant how archaic and broken these systems are. Oh, man. Apparently, a sin is not unchangeable in Canada. It's just really hard to do so. Yeah, there you go. And then immediately, you would have to change it constantly because everyone from your employer to your credit card issuer to your bank is going to need your social insurance number because it's like so, so important and like definitely you or like whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay, except all these people have it, so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Sorry, I'm I'm having an angry wen show today. No, it's okay. I'm going to derail us though because I almost forgot again, but uh, uh, I was reminded. Uh, LTX weekly updates. BYOC ticket has been officially updated to do $150. The BYOC mm. ticket includes two day access to the expo. So unlike PAX tickets, I want to make this really clear because I think a lot of people are used to PAX tickets. Unlike PAX tickets, you just buy the BYOC ticket, and it includes two-day access to the expo. You don't buy access to the expo and the BYOC ticket. You just buy the BYOC ticket. Our BYOC is overnight, so you could start at 10 a.m. on Saturday and stay in the BYOC area until 6 p.m. on Sunday. We're not saying that we recommend that. <laughs> but you can. But you could. Um, and somebody probably will. Uh, BYOC oh, yeah, your dad probably <laughs> will. Dad probably will. <laughs> BYOC, BYOC tickets will include a whale land shirt. Sick. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, if any creators, is it the same one or is it new? Uh, it's going to be a new whale land shirt. Sweet. Because okay. this is whale land too. Yeah, it makes sense. Yep. The if any land creators land. are interested in attending, reach out to us via info at ltxexpo.com. Dot com. We'll be sending out invites to creators that we've worked with in the past and those who we know are interested in attending. I think Paul and Kyle are already confirmed. I bugged them during their charity stream. I was like, hey, come up. Oh, I I um I sent them a bunch of money to hit their target. Oh, nice. I didn't make it a condition that they had to come to LTX, but I sent it and I was like, hey, you guys are coming to LTX, right? <laughs> they would have come anyway they would have come anyway i was That's just ribbing them but i sent the money to try to coax them as well but it it wasn't it wasn't that much it, it bumped but you know uh if any creators are interested in attending reach it oh i already said that bit um anyone who has already reached out will also get an update with more info on what we can do to help them get to the expo yeah it's gonna be fun uh I, i'm sorry i'm going back to this oh, x xavier my. says i had to use a new credit card it wasn't signed. The store wouldn't let me use it because it wasn't signed. I signed, signed it in, in front, front of them, them yeah. and they accepted it. <laughs> Why are we jumping through utterly meaningless hoops? Yeah, it's, that's totally dance, a thing monkey, too. Dance, monkey, Because technically, there is no rule that it has to be signed for like a certain period of time or you can't see them sign it. So you could like... Try to use your credit card for something, not have a pen, buy a pen from them with cash, yeah. sign, sign it, it, and then pay for something with your credit card. And that's seems totally legit. fine. It seems legit. <laughs> Ever since I was a kid, I've thought signatures are like a crazy way to do any form of authentication. Yeah. To be clear, we mean with a pen. I know there's other guys or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's 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 wild. The fact that we still rely on that is crazy to me. Anytime I sign a document that's actually super important and like my signature is a super important part of it, I'm just like, this is stupid. Every single time. But it is what it is. Yep. Just got to keep keep doing the security dance, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's all working really well. It's a really great theater. Really good. <laughs> it's a great theater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways, speaking of other things that are really great, AMD says that 110 degrees Celsius on the 7900 XTX is oh, in spec. We will get to that. Uh, we should do a couple of merch messages, though. Oh, good call. Um, and we'll do kind of like, uh, we'll do a couple now and remind you guys that if you want to get any merch messages in, it's going to be a pretty good time to get them in soon. It's already pretty late. I was, I was late today um and it's gonna be an even later night for me so i don't want the show to drag on forever because i have to go film one more video before i leave the studio oh. uh yeah i'm we're, we're not we're not accepting less than six videos in a week anymore does that so, mean you stay at work until midnight on fridays if it comes oh, i guess to it's that, a double short week if it comes to that it comes to that but yeah we've had a couple of short weeks and what we really need to do is half the writing team is going to ces and half is staying back here so the goal is that it's going to be all ces content every day during the show and we are going to be trying to make a video a day back here as well so that the editing team can finally have a nice buffer and work cool. in a non-frantic style. We've been really struggling um, to keep up that buffer lately. So a little bit more inside information here. I want to hit us with a couple, Dan? Sure. First one here is from Tyler. Happy New Year. Really excited for the new float plane look in 2023. Linus's thoughts on adding float plane and LTT store to the video about testing sponsors' customer service. Oh, it's going to be a little late. Um, because Ooh, I don't want to say too much about that video. There's some... That video is well underway. Also, we know. We know about the problems. We have quadrupled 
the size of our customer support team in the last three months. Um, they are working their way through tickets now. Like we are regularly down. We're, we're coming down. I think we're at about four day response times, which is utterly unacceptable. Uh, but that's where we're at right now. Um, it's also worth noting that some of the reports you see of how bad things are are not accurate. Um, I read a tweet today claiming that they had tried to contact us multiple times and their order never arrived and blah, 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 blah. They had tried once and it was 13 minutes before they tweeted. So like... That's a bit of a yikes. Sometimes, sometimes what you're seeing is real. I'm not going to deny that. We've had some problems. We've been too slow. Uh, sometimes... Um, it's not our fault. You can't have no spam filtering. You literally can't. We like can't disable it completely. And sometimes people's messages do get caught by our spam filter. We do our best to write it as, as soon as we manage to find it. Um, and then You're other get times on that there's technically a way, but it's like garbage and you shouldn't do it. Oh, I thought you told me we couldn't do it. No. Oh, maybe. you don't want to go that way though. Oh, okay. okay. So maybe that's what you told me. Maybe. Okay. Well, fine. There. From him. So I had I had him and Nick look into it. Um, and then some of them are just people making things up. Like legitimately, that happens. And I'm not going to call out anyone specifically right now, but sometimes people are just, for whatever reason, like I, I can't fathom people's agenda sometimes, but sometimes people are just making it up. I, it's, it is not fair because the volume of tickets aren't even comparable. Uh, but Full Plains customer support has been killing it. Good job, Joe. Also, Joe's been wearing multiple hats and trying to help over at Creator Warehouse. There's genuinely been a really big effort to get that under control. Yeah. Uh, quadrupling a staff size is like not a simple task. Um, onboarding all those people takes time, and that takes time away from like the the skilled, knowledgeable people that are already on staff from doing the job of answering tickets. But you're trying to invest in the future, but people are mad now. So like, and it's the a, farther so you fall behind now, the more tickets come in. And the, and the angrier people get, and then the angrier people get, you have more back and forth, so it takes more time. And so you like, have so many tickets because you're getting so many orders, and because you have so many orders, your warehouse gets overloaded, and because they're overloaded, you get more tickets. It's a big, brutal cycle. But It's a first world problem. Yeah. It's a good problem. The store problem is killing it. To have as a business. The store is absolutely crushing it. Like, great job. I yeah. mean, you can see there's... Almost no products on the site with less than a four and a half star review rating, or average uh, review rating. Like it's, they're amazing. It's an amazing team doing amazing work. Uh, but there have been some hiccups this year. And you know what? Some of them were avoidable. I have to take my share of the blame. Like I should have, I should have pushed harder. I should have paid closer attention. Uh, when we started to run into trouble, I, I should have laid out a path. Like it's, there's things that I could have and should have done. Um, but all we can do now is do better. Try our so, best to fix it. So that's what we're that's what we're doing. Okay, I got another one here from Adrian. Hey, Linus and Luke recently had a UPS die at my house and was wondering what kind of UPS do you use for your critical equipment at LNG? Oh, I don't use UPS anymore. I prefer FedEx. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that you had to witness that at your house. I, I want to say one <laughs> one thing about the the last topic really quick as well. Yeah. I don't know if we could do that super legitimately without people saying uh, that there's like inside bias and stuff. If we tried to yeah. evaluate our own customer support, even if we did it, people would call us liars anyway. That's what I'm saying. Um, I still I I I'm, I'm interested in you it. I'd like to do it. Yeah. I can tell you now that the sponsor secret shopping project isn't going to be the last. So that's absolutely something that we could do. Wait. No, I pitched it. Pitched what? Secret Shopping LTT Star. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally blanked on that. Yeah, I pitched it to James. I actually don't know if they are Secret Shopping LTT Star. <laughs> I know that the project has started. That was the thing that it, I... It's going to get called out. like. Huh. Okay. I mean... We'll and do, I mean, we'll it would best. be fair to call it. <laughs> it yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't, I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. I'm just saying people are 100% going to call it out. All I can say is the customer care team, however many of them there are, has one directive. Make it right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. What kind of UPS do you use for your critical equipment at LMG? Uh, we use one from Eaton. 
Yeah, but you have other little ones too, though, right? Oh, 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 So the, oh, the yeah. giant UPS that's in the server room yes. is a huge, crazy, epic monster from Eaton. Yeah. But then we like have smaller ones all proper over Proper industrial grade like yeah. commercial UPS. Yep. Um, and then the ones, yeah, the ones that we use for just everyone's workstations because it's just, man, it's not worth it. Like every UPS is like $150 or whatever. Like they're not cheap. But if the power goes out and that thing that that person was working on was worth, I don't know, something. You'll thank, your, you'll thank yourself for having paid for UPSs so they can save their work and shut down properly. It's, it's so, I can't, cannot emphasize the importance enough. Um, so I believe, hey, Dan, uh, they're APC units, hey? Uh, I believe so, yeah. APC 1200s, 1500s, I don't know. We buy them in bulk at Costco a lot. Yeah, I, I, my, it's mine, mine at the home is a, power, is a UPS from Costco. Yeah, there you yeah. go. <laughs> I, I think most of the cost is with the batteries anyway. So yeah, if yeah. they go bad, do we just take them back to Costco? Uh, I'm not going to answer that. I actually, I actually don't know. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, that's a good idea. Um, next, y yeah, okay. What else we got? We got one from David. Hey, Linus and Luke, uh, heart you both. Quick question regarding cloud services. It seems that when mentioning a cloud service provider, I've seldom heard Azure as a reference point in lieu of AWS, Google, or even Linode. Any reason, or is that just happenstance? Like from us? Apparently. I, I, I never talk about Azure. I can tell you that much. Uh, I just, I, I, I just don't really think about them. Yeah. Yeah. Like, have you ever used Azure for anything? Yeah. Oh, okay. Like what? Um, it was a long time ago, to be honest. I needed some vm thing that like worked better through azure for some project that was like pre this oh already like a long time ago um since then i haven't but like floatplane doesn't really use a lot of that stuff anyways yeah we kind of built in its our like own core design thing like the the whole idea of floatplane was to not do that so like we don't use a lot of that stuff at work so i don't know i don't have we talked about linode much I don't know if they're Not talking much. about from Linode us. Linode has sponsored from... us. Okay, so maybe we have. So we've talked about them for sure. Yeah. Azura hasn't sponsored us, so. They might have at one point. Really? I think so, actually. Surprise! Microsoft has sponsored much at all. Oh, Microsoft has sponsored stuff with us before. I'm trying to think. Didn't they? Um... <sighs> what is, or have they? <laughs> this is the, the, the best way. That I can avoid uh, bias is that I actually just don't know a lot of the time. <laughs> I don't think it's been a ton. I know I've talked to yeah. someone from Microsoft and basically heard from them that they're not honestly the biggest fan of doing it, like sponsoring direct influencers too much. And yeah, stuff. Okay, I see I them so. do it 100%. Oh, yeah, definitely. But seen I know them do it's it. like if they really wanted to turn it on, they could like just crush. Because they have all this financial backing and they have Xbox. So they have lots of people interacting with their things all the time. And they have Windows. They have lots of people interacting with their things all yeah. the time. Like it would, they would be able to just like cover the internet, but they just, they don't for whatever reason. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's a funny so, thing. So it's sponsors or ads. Linus doesn't see ads. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good take. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's kind of a funny it's kind of a funny stance. Like, I, it doesn't really matter what company you are. Like, e even we engage in influencer marketing with other influencers yeah. because it works. Like, compared to conventional conventional marketing, it's just it, it's kind of you got to imagine that it's like some CMO or like VP level executive there that just is like, yeah, TV. Yep. You know, or something. Large event. Let's do my TV! Microsoft does a lot like of, just... like, big event sponsorship type of stuff. I don't see them doing a ton of influencer things. Or if they do influencer things, I see it more as, like, an entire takeover, you know? Yeah. Like, we're going to send this person to this various country, and they're going to specifically check out our product, blah, 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 blah. It's not a lot of, like, sponsor spot type things. Yeah, it just seems kind of silly to take an entire like branch of marketing and just be like, yeah, we don't like that. What don't like what? Like, I don't really get what you mean by that. I agree. I it mean, there's a little antiquated. But I mean, there are some risks. Like you. There are risks there associated. Are you have to risks. actually do due diligence on the people that you're sponsoring and make sure they're not complete a-holes, for example, because that does end up dragging your brand through the mud. Yeah. I mean, that's something. 
Um, all right, why don't we uh, why don't we do uh, some more topics, guys? If you want to get your merch messages in, uh, we just launched new colors of our plaid flannels. We just launched our new super comfy pajama pants. So those are great things to check out. Also, you know, don't forget backpacks are shipping now. So there's no backlog for backpacks. Um, just trying to think if there's anything else to kind of update you guys on. No, sounds good. Oh yeah, topic. Yeah. You were going to talk about AMD thinking that 110 degrees is uh, yes. pretty chill on the 7900 XTX. User reports of AMD's recently released Radeon RX uh, 7900 XTX GPU commonly hitting hotspot temperature of 110 degrees Celsius and throttling have been met with, uh, you know, dismissal from Team Red, at least until it went viral. That's how things tend to go. Uh, the first user that we know of to bring this up attempted to get an RMA from AMD, first posted their problems 11 days ago, but on the 26th, AMD claimed that 110 degrees was in spec for RDNA 3 GPUs. And the made by AMD cards, such as the one we reviewed, can safely operate at that temperature, a temperature high enough to boil water and and uh, probably cook things on. Uh, more specifically, they said it is the normal junction temperature. Uh, in the reviewer's guide given to press, AMD had a special note on GPU temperature, specifically mentioning that the card aggressively boosts until reaching the junction temperature on any of its sensors, but that the product will operate below this temperature under normal workloads. Anthony notes that this is normal for AMD cards and would be unremarkable. We did not remark on it. If it only hit 110 rarely. Okay, I get what he's saying. If it very rarely happened, it wouldn't be remarkable. Got okay. it. Okay. Since the original complaint, many other users have reported thermal issues with some taking their cards apart to inspect the thermal interface material. Ooh. Ah, that's going to be a problem. Um, in many cases, it seems the flatness of the cooler may be part of the problem with obvious contact points and no contact voids visible. That's not good. Uh, one user went so far as to attempt to return the card to AMD, but was denied because they had already opened the box. Okay. So it wasn't even taking the card apart. It was just opening the box in AMD's defense. This seems to be their distributor digital rivers policy and not theirs. Uh... I can tell you right now, a distributor's policy is based on the policy upstream. Yeah. That's like how that works. Yeah, that's not much defense. If the policy upstream is, yeah, take it back, we'll deal with it, then the distributor is more than happy to not have to have someone yell at them on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's not a defense. Uh, AMD's been having a hard time with the 7900 series so far, particularly in respect to power and thermals, which they appear to have known about prior to launch. In particular, the cards released uh, so far have locked power play tables, a popular method for overclocking Radeon GPUs, which means that overclock potential is much more limited than previous generations. This coincides with our testing where we noted very strange power consumption figures and an apparent inability for the card to effectively throttle itself. Yeesh. Power Color Steven, a rep for one of AMD's board partners, I wonder which one, uh, has chimed in asking everyone to send reports of high thermals to him regardless of board vendor. Cool. To help collect data and provide evidence to AMD that there is in fact a problem. That's cool. Help them out if you have evidence. Uh, AMD has since recognized that they are thermal that there are thermal throttling issues with the 7900 XTX and recommend users contact them directly. And maybe Steven, maybe do both. Uh, the user with the opened and non-refundable Radeon is now being offered that refund. <laughs> but AMD still won't pay for shipping. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Discussion Ooh, question. Roasted. What what is the correct way of addressing a problem like this and how is AMD missing the mark if they are? I mean, the correct way of addressing it is to basically stop blaming the user for one thing. Yeah. If, if a card that is completely assembled and shipped to a user as a single unit and it just goes in a place is seeing these kinds of temperatures if, especially if they knew that this was a problem prior to launch, I just don't really understand why uh, nobody was primed on it and why they didn't have some idea that this was going to happen. At the same time, though, like, I mean, at 110 degrees, I wonder if you're getting it. I mean, you're not supposed to stick your hand in your computer, but I wonder if there's like safety concerns. Well, um, no, because that's at, that's like the, the junction temperature. That's yeah. not what the actual but, heat. So this is what at. I'm kind of. Oh, yeah, fair enough. This is what I'm kind of getting at, though. If it's if it's rarely. 
And if it's only at specific spots, if it's not overall temperature, stuff like that. And it is in spec. Is this a pro? Is this much of a problem? Well, it's a. It depends how rare rarely is. Yeah, it's a problem if the thermal compound is not contacting properly. That's like that was the scary part of the article for me. Yeah, the void zones. That's a little sketch. Yeah, that's that's super sketch. I mean, these dyes are packed so densely with transistors. Yeah, you that can't if, just like have a spot that isn't being cooled. No, that's or isn't super being cooled bad. properly. I should say. Air is an excellent insulator. And so if you have an air bubble above just one part of this dye, even if it doesn't, even if it doesn't cause a problem immediately, it there's a very good time. chance it could in the long term. Especially if it's not throttling itself properly, which was also noted. Yes. So, what is the correct way of addressing this problem? Uh, I mean, I would say it should be probably through their partners, since that's where the boards are going to be shipping through. There's no more built by AMD. I <laughs> said ATI. There's no more built by AMD cards anymore. Right. So the way they should be addressing it again is if partners are afraid that if they take cards back, they're not going to get compensation for them, then that's going to be reflected in their policies. So the policy needs to be that they need to support their partners. <coughs> And I mean, probably offer that guy free shipping. Both AMD and NVIDIA have been guilty of not supporting pro partner partners properly, then blaming partners when there's bad customer service. And this is why when people when people try to like fanboy for AMD and and act like they're they're like perfect squeaky clean, and we're like, man, like we want them to do well. Yeah, as we really well. do. For like, real. We genuinely really do. Like. But you can support and not be a fanboy. That is entirely possible. Yeah, exactly. You, you can cheer something on and not be a fanboy, and still and still see the challenges. Yeah, right. Like, you know, I made a whole video. I love Intel, right? Why I still love Intel, I think, was the title of the video. That doesn't mean that they don't have a lot of problems, and that's yeah. what the video was about. And Perk. it's the same for AMD. I still love AMD, but they've got a lot of problems, right? And that's the thing. I mean, anytime. Anytime there's a human element, right, it's going to be amazing. But there's going to be some amazing screw-ups, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, that, that's, that's, the, that's the magic of being human. So we just have to... And it's, it's not wrong to recognize that. Yeah. It's fine to err as human, right? You just got to gotta fix it after. So, yeah, they should, they should probably cover shipping for the guy if the cart is defective, right? It, it's it's wild to me that in the tech industry it has been normalized to pay for return shipping on a defective item. If you want to return something, you're paying the shipping. Like no one's going to eat that for you. But this thing is broken. What? That's not on me. Yeah. I mean, you should be compensating me for the time it takes to put it back in a box and like drop it off for you. Yeah. No, you should be booking a courier to come at my convenience and pick it up. Like I don't I don't get it. Don't don't ship broken stuff. But the, I mean that's the thing. That's the race to zero, right? Is and like to be clear, we've talked about this extensively in the past. I understand why. There's no margin in this industry. If they actually offered the kind of service that I think is correct, They'd go out of business, and then, then there would be no tech. You would not buy them until someone who has worse policies and can stay in business stays in business, and you'll buy from them because ultimately you're still going to want a new GPU. And that's why, that's why we take it. That's why we lie down and take it. Uh... There's a rapid fire topic. Uh, LTT float plane exclusive. The Starforge info is up on LMG clips for 48 hours only. Apparently there is a link to this video in the WAN show description. Uh, this is some behind the scenes content that you can find on our Linus Tech Tips float plane account or Linus Tech Tips float plane page. Uh, sign up for float plane for as little as five bucks a month or 50 bucks a year at floatplane.com slash Linus Tech Tips or LTT. There's so many good exclusives on Floatplane. Like, I think the policy now is we shouldn't go three days without a new exclusive, whether it's behind the scenes or like an Ask the Team or um, extra, like cutting room floor or anything like that. And yeah, just don't, I, I would highly suggest adding the slash LTT on the end because then you just go directly to the account. You don't have to go to the front page. Yeah. 
I know our front page is bad. We'll fix it. Moving on. More topics. Should we talk about the most exciting thing ever? A graphics card leak? I guess. I wonder what graphics card hasn't been leaked in the last while. NVIDIA leaks their own card. Wait, you mean all the previous leaks weren't also directly from the companies? Well, no, in a lot of cases. I mean, NVIDIA in particular, it's pretty... Uh, I believe that if an NVIDIA leak happens, it is um, probably not intentional. Okay. Like pretty much every one of their cards gets leaked, though. Uh, well, yeah, that's because they're working with a whole bunch of partners all over the world. And yeah, fair they, enough. they eventually have to tell them something. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. Um, when show behind the scenes full point exclusive, please. It's not that interesting. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. I mean, if you're on float plane, you get the pre-show. Yeah. Which is kind of a behind the scenes, like when we're setting up and we're talking about topics and stuff. Sometimes it's very short, like a minute. And we're just like, okay, let's go. And then other times we kind of shoot the breeze for We could, we could maybe minutes. have Dan like shoot a thing about the setup that's back there. Yeah, that would be a, that'd a be a pretty good float plane exclusive. Yeah. Now this, that it works. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think they did a short about it. <laughs> did they? Oh, okay. Uh, okay. That's cool. Sweet. Um, anyways, yeah, NVIDIA leaks their own card, RTX 4070 Ti. NVIDIA Omniverse, in quotes, the platform for creating and operating metaverse applications. Sick. Leaked the 4070 Ti confirmation. They were, they were quick to retract the info, but here's a screenshot from the Omniverse article. Want to show oh, it? I do. There we wow. go. Wow. Nice. This all but confirms that NVIDIA has simply rebadged the 4080 12 gig as the 4070 Ti. Nice. Same memory size, same boost clock, same CUDA core count, um, and there's a link to the Tech Power Up 4080 page. Uh, there are also rumors of a slight price drop, originally $899 for the 4080 12 gig, now $799, potentially. Not sure. This is still a $200 price jump from the 3070 Ti, which had an MSRP of $599, so it's still bad. Overall, people don't seem excited about the current price of modern hardware, <laughs> with good reason. Desktop GPU sales have reached their lowest point since 2005. What a great video title that would be. Overall, Overall <laughs> people don't seem excited about the current price of computer hardware. <laughs> <laughs> or the current price of anything, because companies are just looting people and it's horrific. Yeah. Uh, Micron has seen uh, demand drop so much that they've cut 10% of their workforce. Intel reported a 15% decline in sales and a 59% drop in overall profits for Q3 2022 compared to Q3 2021. Yikes. I do think there was a bit of a spike in purchasing when COVID happened because people needed to boost their home offices. Yeah. And now we're probably dealing with the trail off of that, yeah. which makes sense. Absolutely. Um, more information should be available at CES next week. That totally makes sense. Watch the channel. There's going to be a bunch of videos. Uh, discussion question. Why did the 90 tier basically stay the same price? Because it was already overpriced. But 70 Got and 80 have increased so much. It's 50 because the they were less overpriced. Entry level, and it's 60 the new 70 for mid range gamers. I mean, it's pretty simple. Basically, what we're seeing is that NVIDIA observed during the most recent crypto craze people are gonna pay. that people were willing to pay this new amount. And they are, being the market leader, they essentially set the price for what a GPU costs. And this is why we were so upset when people were happy to pay that. Yeah. Because as a business, as much as we can rag on NVIDIA, which is a lot, as a business, this is what you're supposed to do. It sucks. It, it sucks. But every business school in the world will tell you to do this. What the market will bear. Yeah. And so... It's like literally like lesson one of the whole program. And so what gamers, I mean, it basically operates exactly the same way as the current housing bubble that's taking place in in BC, right? Like instead of, instead, the calculus for affording a home is supposed to be based on how much income versus how much the price is so that you can live in it, right? But as people have started treating real estate as a speculative investment, and as people have turned that speculative investment into more than just a speculative investment, hoping that it will go up in value, but also a uh, like a, a regular revenue investment uh, through either leasing to other people directly or as in particular through Airbnb, the calculus 
has changed a lot. So now people who just want a place to live have to bid against people who want to rent it and uh, just have free cash flow to acquire these properties and can afford to wait for a return, maybe in five or 10 or 20 years. And they have to bid against people who are renting it short term, which can generate just um, unbelievable returns. I mean, that's that's what the calculation is based on. I wish I could find it. I read this amazing article that was basically like, the average price for a home will be like $5 million. I don't remember what exactly the number was, but like this, this astronomical number by this year, not very far from now. And here's the math to prove it. If anybody has this article, please, please post it in the chat. Cause I want, there's been a handful of people I've wanted to show it to because it's, it was really amazing. It opened my eyes because I realized that it's not because there's not enough houses. It's certainly not because people are making more money. It's because the commoditization of housing and the way that it's transitioned from being a place for people to live, a, a, a basic necessity to this vehicle for investment dollars um, has changed the way we calculate how much it's worth. So the worth of a house is no longer based on what a person can afford. The worth of a house is based on how much a landlord can extract or based on how much a, in particular, short-term landlord can extract from multiple short-term tenants. And if you look at the numbers, the amount of money that people charge for an Airbnb, assuming they can get even 75% like uh what would it be like a fill rate or like i don't i don't even know what term to use for it but uh 75% occupancy yeah, or something yeah, like yeah, that sure yeah it's it's mind blowing yeah. right and so how can you how can you possibly bid against that if they can just use their money to make money then the price goes up proportional to how much they can charge for it and that's never going to be attainable for just like normal people working normal jobs trying to buy a house i i understand where you're coming from um fan stand somebody said nobody's home in bc is a basic necessity that's that's just not true but i understand where you're coming from people still need places to yeah live. people like by by that logic no food in california is a basic necessity because yeah. they could go get food somewhere else there like, is yeah, lots that, of basic housing that is a that's a brain BC. dead take <laughs> sorry bro <laughs> I should I shouldn't have pointed you out to Linus. I'm sorry, brother. <laughs> I think I get where he's coming from because he's saying it's all investments, basically. And to a certain degree, even if you didn't intend it to be investment, it, it is now. But there's a lot that can be done to. But prevent you still that. have to have a place to live. Yeah, yes, for sure. There's that's a also lot true. that can be done to prevent that, and it could go back that way. I don't have exactly the right solution. Anyone claiming to have a perfect solution is 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 a, probably out to lunch. Probably either yeah, a liar or an idiot. Um, but like, there's obvious there's low hanging fruit that could improve the situation. Uh, so anyway, it's pretty much the same thing that happened with GPUs. Instead of weighing the 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 personal satisfaction, the value of of enjoying gaming against the number of hours that you had to work doing something, presumably it isn't your favorite thing to do, um, to, to attain it, it, is no longer the primary driver of GPU pricing. The primary driver of GPU pricing became how much money you could earn with it over a prolonged period of time for people who had money to invest. Um, and so NVIDIA enjoyed that shift and is now trying to maintain that momentum for as long as possible. And AMD is absolutely playing along. A thousand dollar GPU is still unbelievable. Oh yeah. 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 It's way out of line with inflation. Yeah. And inflation is out of line with what inflation should be. I mean, you need to look no further than the record profits of our local friendly grocery, um, Oh yeah, so sorry we have to increase the prices on these various oh, it's, goods it's all at the grocery inflation. store. It's all inflation. It's because of inflation. By the way, 60% higher peak profit than we've ever had in history. Yeah. It's like, I wonder it, where that came from. It was inflation though. Yeah. It's just so bullcrap. <laughs> Groceries are so expensive, it's actually crazy. Uh... Yeah, water would be good, but what I'd rather have is some merch messages. All right, let's get you some merch messages. Thank you. <clears throat> hey, this one's from Brandon. Uh, do any of you have New Year's resolutions, or do you have resolution on any of the businesses? 
Is there something you are looking forward to in uh, the new year? I've never done res- New Year's resolutions. January 1st is just a day to me. Yeah. You can form resolutions at any day out of the year. You can decide you're going to improve yourself 365 days a year. I think your December 30th resolution should be to not put things off until some arbitrary bullshit. That's a good resolution. Yeah. That's the best resolution. I like it. I miss all my goals January 1st and then have to wait another year. It's perfect. <laughs> um, this one's from William. Hey, guys, love the show. Do you guys have any little hacks, scripts, or automations that you find make your life or workflow better? Yeah. Hiring people? <laughs> <laughs> That's a hack. That's a good one. Um yeah, we have, I mean, we have tons at, at Flowplane. Um, we, we finally actually handed Ed, oh, I have to give him the update. Um, but we have the update for it, but the, the, the whisperer thing, I'll tell you about that. That's like more or less done now. So whisperer thing. It, it taps into open AI whisper. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. just like an easy way to do yep. it. So now instead of needing to install the dependencies and all that kind of stuff, you just run an executable. It throws some temporary files around and handles all that for you. And then you can either select file, press a button that says select file and a file prompt opens up, or you just drag and drop things on top of it. And it can queue a bunch and then queue all the tasks and go through all of them. And it automatically deposits the uh, the script file in the root folder for where the video came from, to, regardless of where it came from. And you could queue up like a bunch of videos all at once and it'll just chug through all the tasks. Oh, and super cool. Has drop down menus for all your different settings and stuff. I mean, his basically entire job. Oh, you know what? Why don't you do your eyes thing? What? The eyes thing that you were so proud of? I have no idea. In Slack? <laughs> oh! Okay. The eyes thing is cool. Um, there's So he's still on the thing, so I won't say the name. But there, there's some. this was collaborative. But notifications in Slack suck. Notifications in Teams suck. Notifications in everything sucks. Yeah, boo notifications. But I also, used I want to, all my notifications. Please I used to, to be super <laughs> mad at specific applications for this. And now I just... I'm not mad at specific applications. I'm just mad at everything. Mm. Um, notifications in the modern era are just rough. It seems like I will definitely, for sure, get notifications for things that I don't care about. Yeah. And I will often not get notifications for things at all or get notifications like days down the line. I got a notification from Teams. I think I might have shown you this. It was like over 170 days old. <laughs> It came up on my thing and it said like 170 whatever D. And I was like, what is that? And I clicked on it and it like scrolled all the way up and got wow. me back to the message. And I was like, bro, what wow. was this? Like the entire reason why this application is important is because it needs to notify me of important work communications. That is like the core thing that I needed to do. And it, and it just fails at it. And so does Slack. I'm not singling out teams. So we have this thing now where, um, both, both like the, the, the float plane specific team and the labs web specific team, both of them are doing this thing where when they do standups, um, or sorry, not when they do standups, when you like post a thing for code review, uh, you, the, the person that you're tagging that should be reviewing it reacts to it with eyes when they've seen it. You don't have to rely on notifications anymore. And then everyone in their profile on Slack, if you click on them, you can see their phone number. So if they don't react to it, you can, it's not, it's not even a rude thing, right? I think honestly, a year ago, if someone texted me and was like, Hey, you, you haven't looked at whatever yet. I would have probably been like, that's a Yo, little, um, like, give me a sec, dude, yeah. whatever. Now, no, not rude anymore because you probably didn't get notified. It probably didn't work. I'll be yeah. at my computer focused working on stuff and i'll get a text message from the main one it happens from for me the the person that actually popularized it might be watching right now is Jaden. by the way did you see this come through because he will have worked on something for a while and i need to roll it out on the app store or something i have no idea he sent me the message yep. my phone hasn't gone off i haven't gotten a desktop notification yep. slack isn't blinking nothing's happening there's no reason for me to read this i'm just 
working on whatever. And then he texts me and I'm like, oh, good. Now I know I will open up Slack to the channel that do isn't even highlighted. It doesn't even say that there's a message there. I click on it and yup, there's his whole nicely written out prepared thing for it. It's like, oh my God. So yeah, if, if the person doesn't react with eyes, you can just text them and then eventually they'll see it. They'll react with eyes. Now you know for sure because read receipts, if they exist, they don't exist in Slack, as far as I know. Maybe you can get an add-on for it. But if they exist, are also not reliable. Yeah. Because what if the person just had the window open? Yeah. They might not know it came in. So now you react specifically that way, and you know it's good. And I love it. I mean, Luke's at the point now where compared to 18 months ago, I'd say you're managing, what, about three times more people? It's probably somewhere around there. Yeah, and maybe not necessarily, like, managing, but certainly... Getting... Need reporting from yeah yeah like it might a be lot someone else who's realistically their actual like manager or, um, like who actually gives them tasks to work on that too but Luke is the uh, Luke is the only person in like executive management here who can look at code and have any idea what the crap it is like what, is one this thing that I will is say... this spaghetti or is this <laughs> <laughs> one thing that I will say is yeah. Our development team is really strong, so it helps when, like, I'll say the the lab's local team, all of them are. It's it's three developers. Uh, there are other people that do development on the lab's local team, but I'm talking about three specific ones. I don't know who's off probation, and who isn't, so I'm just not going to say any names. Well, Jake is clearly off probation, but I'm not. I think Nick is as well. Then I'm not sure about the last one, so I'm not going to say that person's name. Um, but they're all like super good. So I can be pretty hands off with them, realistically. I mostly just like want to know what they're working on so I can make yeah. sure that if there's any blocks that I can remove or if they need to connect with someone else on the team, I can make sure that happens or whatever. Like I'm mostly trying to be a support structure for them because they're just like killing it. Um, oh yeah, someone in chat said, love it. I do eyes and then green check mark when done. You guessed the green check mark part because we do that too. It's great. It's great. I Yeah, it's fantastic. Nice. Uh, Want to hit us with some more merch messages? Sure. I've got one here from an anonymous user. Would you uh, be at all interested in touring a fiber ISP? I mean, what ISP would not have fiber optics? If you don't have any fiber optics and you're an ISP, think, you're a pretty uh, tier ISP. I think ISP. I would be more interested in touring a non-fiber ISP. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have rope. We like vibrated at a certain frequency to send data packets. Um, for, for real though, yeah, I'd, I'd be pretty interested in touring an ISP. Um, depends what you mean by ISP. ISPs have a lot of what different, to show. yeah, have a lot of different facilities. Um, I can tell you right now, you're not going to get me out of bed for just like a, a cursory high level thing. If I don't get to actually poke and prod at things, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go. Um, and that's, that's not me just like being an ass about it. Uh, that's me recognizing what the viewers expect from LTT and wanting to deliver that. So it's kind of like what I said to Micron. It's like, yeah, sponsorship aside, I don't care. You pay me, don't pay me. We're not even having a conversation if I'm not building my own RAM. Because, and there's so much feedback on that video. This is the best video you've ever done. This is the best factory tour ever. This is it's fantastic. I've seen it now. It's be great. Because that's where I draw my line in the sand. Does that make me a little difficult to deal with? Sure. But not for you guys, right? <laughs> for you guys, it's great. Because if I'm, you know, a hard-nosed negotiator with these companies that are offering tours or whatever else, then ultimately that's a benefit for all of us because we get a way deeper look. So in response, yeah, I'm interested, but don't waste my time. Don't waste, and by that, I mean, don't waste our viewers' time. So if you guys are have actual like high level approval so we don't have to go in and like yo you can't go in that room oh you have to blur that or whatever yeah sure let's talk um yeah i'm interested there yeah that would be pretty exciting got another one here from mark hey linus and luke i'll be attending ces for the first time next week anything you wish you knew before your first ces and or advice for a first time attendee on how to make the most of the event Vegas is really big like the strip you know, you look at it on a map and it's like, oh, it's just like a few hotels. I walked everywhere my first year. It's mostly, it's most, 
I think part of it is an effect because they really oppress being able to walk anywhere reasonably. I almost died. Don't, I wouldn't try to walk everywhere. Yeah. If you can afford it, take cars. It's not yeah. designed for you to be able to walk around very efficiently. If you don't know the like really weird routes that feel like you're doing something you shouldn't be doing. I, I, I am very anti-tipping culture. I think people should just be paid properly. To be clear, I tip. Um, because I know they're not paid properly, um, but I'm I'm very anti-tipping culture in general. Um, but even though I'm anti-tipping culture, I would say in Las Vegas. Okay, so, so here I will tip just because I know people aren't paid properly. In Las Vegas, I tip to make sure that Things people don't harm me. Yeah, I, I and my stuff. They're really aggressive. I I didn't tip enough. I did tip, but I didn't tip satisfactorily to some cabbie, and he literally took my luggage out of the back of the car and threw it on the ground. <laughs> like, excuse me, if I if I never had to go to Las Vegas again, I wouldn't. Yeah, if you're not into the things that Las Vegas is is made for, um, yeah, it's, it's and not great. Take, I, I don't like Las Vegas at all. If you're not going to a specific place, that's um, the strip to not, be specific. Yeah, if the, you're not going to a specific place. Um, I would use the monorail as much as possible to get to and from the convention center, at least. Yeah. It's possible you, like the first year I went, I stayed at Excalibur, which I didn't know was like a bad hotel or something. Like, to, uh, honestly, to me, even now, they're like all kind of the same. They all smell like crap um, because they allow smoking on the casino floor. And they just dump perfume yeah to try to cover it to up cover it up but so like they, it doesn't really and it's just yeah they all smell awful um they're they're all i mean theoretically i guess like you know oh there'll be like a class of clientele here or there or whatever in practice everyone just goes and gambles at whatever hotel they feel like going to like anyone can walk into any of them so it's like the the the, the imaginary lines that they draw between like the good hotels and the bad hotels i, I don't really get it personally uh, but anyway i stayed at excalibur not realizing that it's like a bad one or something and um, I will say it's inconvenient to get anywhere from Excalibur because it's like way down at the end of the strip. So I wasn't really able to take the monorail anywhere. But if you can, uh, stay somewhere with easy monorail access because that's by far the fastest, most affordable way to get around. Definitely most affordable. Because during CES, while getting around in a car is, is probably a better way to go than walking, depending on where you need to walk. Um, it's going to be slow because everyone else is doing that too. Yeah. Okay, I've got another one here. Do you guys think wired mainstream earbuds will forever be an extinct species, or might they return? My AirPods desyncing from my Z Fold 3 in my pocket is uh, close to giving me an aneurysm, and every USB-C to 3.5 millimeter adapter is horrible in some way. It's annoying that that's true. Yeah, um, I, th I think it's over. I think wired headphone party is is definitely over. Um, I mean, I, I've seen that it's becoming trendy to use wired headphones again, but I, I don't see that becoming the norm again. I don't think Apple's going to release a new iPhone with a three and a half millimeter jack. It's not happening. Yeah. And what Apple does, so does the rest of the industry. Yeah. Hopefully those, those adapters get better. Ah, uh, yes. Um, Sec IT guy says you should stay at the Aria. It's smoke free and segmented from everywhere else. Also has monorail access. Uh, that's where we stayed our first year as Linus Media Group. Um, it's also adults only, if I recall correctly. We we did it a, f a few times. The reason we did it though was actually because it had the fastest internet on the strip, yeah. and that's no longer the case. It oh. seems like the one company that deals with everyone's internet now deals with Aria as well. And the the last time we stayed there. <laughs> Excuse me. The internet was just as slow as everywhere else. Ugh. So we paid extra for no reason. That sucks. Okay, I could use some water, Dan. I'm going to take you up on that. Okay, sounds good. Do you want me to read merch messages? I have just like a lingering... I've had this cough for like nine days. Or do you want me to go over another topic <clears throat> so you can take a break? Just anything's fine. Just something... <laughs> dying. I'm looking for another topic. <laughs> I'm fine. Ah, uh, okay. Whew. That was better. <clears throat> oh, this is unfortunate. Pixel 7 users complain of camera... Gr How is this suddenly happening? Pixel 7's been out for a bit, hasn't it? Pixel 7 users complain of camera glass spontaneously cracking, just as MKBHD crowns it phone of the year. 
7 Pro users also affected. Yeah. How this... long has it been out? It hasn't been out for like a while? Yeah, it's been out for a few months. Uh, mm. Users on Reddit, Twitter, there's even a hashtag, and Google's forums have reported that the back camera glass on their Pixel 7 or Pixel 7 Pro phones has just spontaneously cracked, leaving a hole over the camera lens. <clears throat> it's currently unclear what's causing the issue. Some users are reporting it occurring when the phone was in a case. Um, others suspect it may be due to cold weather or accidental bumps. Uh, most, if not all, of these phones have had their camera glass break in identical spots, though, directly over either the wide lens camera or the ultra wide some lens type camera. Of tension with how it's mounted or something. Yep. I mean, well, you know that some types of glass can even have inherent tension, right? Like tempered glass, man. If you ever want to go down a rabbit hole, learn about tempered glass. It's super cool. Spontaneous combustion of like glass doors and stuff. You, Didn't you, that happen to yeah, us? Yeah, that happened yeah. on when back when part of the editing den used to be called the library. That that huge tempered glass door we had just was boom shattered in the middle of the night. Yeah, um, crazy. Google has not yet made an official public comment on the issue, but has assured at least one customer that not only are they aware of it, but after the engineers deliberated, Google decided not to cover it under warranty. Some users have gotten phone replacements <laughs> from Google convenient? support, while others have been told they need to spend hundreds of dollars, 200 at least, 400 for some, to replace the entire back panel. This is the problem with that right to repair bill getting neutered. Yep. Oh, well, you can repair it, but you'll have to buy an assembly. Are you sure you wouldn't rather just have a whole new device? That's the whole problem with the current situation. A similar issue occurred with the displays of Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro phones, with Google blaming owners even telling one customer, screens don't <coughs> crack. Um, that's, a, that's a good one. That's nice. Oh. Uh, our discussion question is, who wrote this? Okay. What does it say about a company when two children in a trench coat trying to sneak into an R-rated movie could do a better job at public relations? I mean, if they can get away with it, they're going to do it. This is why that right to repair bill needs to be better. That's it. Because this is like clearly BS. Yep. I don't know. If it's an issue with the device and they know it's an issue with the device, how is it not covered? That's actually crazy. Speaking of issues, um, what does lifetime even mean? <sighs> Phil Mora says no Mora to lifetime licenses. Uh, I like that nice little touch on the title, Adam. This was written up by Adam. Software company Wondershare recently launched the newest version of their video editing software, Filmora 12. And alongside it, they brought another new feature that lifetime license users now get to pay. I have never heard of Filmora. To be fair, neither have I. Um, but YouTube YouTuber Daniel Batal has. And he noted, he noticed when he tried to log in to the new version of the software, he was prompted to pay for a license to use the new software, despite having a lifetime license that promised all software updates are completely free on the product page. This sounds a lot like, hey, it's only local storage. Um, this, page, this page has now been deleted, but can still be viewed via archive.org. Archive.org. Archive archive just dunking on people again. <laughs> Actually amazing. Batal, whose channel provided numerous tutorial videos for the software, reached out to the company. They replied that, to provide competitive pricing, we provide a big discount for non-subscription plan holders who want to upgrade. It only costs $29.99 to upgrade with free access to effects and plugins worth $20.99. Okay. And noted that many companies do not even offer a perpetual license. That is literally not an argument. Because um, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. They also asked to do another sponsorship with Batal. I hope this goes the direction I think it's going to. Batal's major issues is that the company no longer is providing updates for the software. Makes sense. Their new perpetual license is much worse, providing only updates for Filmora 12 and no updates to future versions of the software. I'm going to add in a little bit thing here, uh, despite claiming that they would. Right. Because, like, you could buy a perpetual license to a version of a software and they could update, and then it's just, it's annoying, but it is what it is. But they said that you would get new versions. So that's the bigger problem. Any. Uh, blah, 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 blah. In emails to Batal, the company clarified that they are calling new versions of software upgrades instead of updates. 
<sighs> and that their license agreement only covered updates. Wow, that is the douchiest thing ever. I don't know if th that word isn't that bad, right? Wow. I'm pretty sure you can say douche. Yeah, okay, cool. Wow, that's horrible. Furthermore, the web page used to state that lifetime users of Filmora 9 or earlier would receive a free upgrade. <laughs> ah, that's funny. But the page was removed a couple weeks ago. Hopefully that one's covered under archive.org as well. Because if it is, then update and upgrade are both stated and they're just liars. Uh, discussion question. In other markets, certain technology is protected. Uh, terminology. Terminology is protected. But tech remains a wild west for advertisers. Do you think the term lifetime needs to become protected? I mean, I thought it was. I thought it was 25 years. I don't like 35 know. 35 years or whatever? I thought lifetime in any form of marketing like was Well, a thing. like a limited lifetime warranty is within the reasonable expected lifespan of the product. Like that's why we had that whole warranty conversation where at the end of the day... Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> the value of a warranty is only in the company's will to honor it. That is true. It is a true thing. Our will... To honor our, uh, to, to support our products, to honor our warranty, to honor our commitment to you guys is extremely high. And like, yes, you can take companies to court over it and stuff like that, but it often no one becomes, will. It often becomes far too unreasonable for a standard user so that yes. no one will. And yes. class actions suck. All they do is enrich lawyers. There's basically no recourse. So with that in mind, um, no, I don't think lifetime does have any particular actual meaning that carries any kind of weight. I think lifetime means whatever they decide it means. And in this case, they are altering the agreement and pray they don't alter it further. There's a... <laughs> Nice. Uh, there's a, another discussion question, which ties into kind of what you were just saying that says, when you buy a product, what does lifetime mean in your eyes? What should it mean? To me, I'm going to throw this in here. I will always look into the company if that is said. And if it's right. like Snap-on or something, that's sure. just the main one I can think of. Lifetime is going to mean a lot to me because like every customer you hear about from Snap-on will say, yep, their tools are incredibly expensive, but the truck comes by every Friday and if something's broken, I get a new one. Unless you talk to people whose truck is like not, not there that reliable. or whatever, right? There's, I've, I've heard some people say it's not always There's issues in relation to that. But as far as my understanding goes, if you break a snap-on tool... My understanding is the policy is, and you might run into an idiot, like that ICBC sure. person that I ran into who just had it in their mind that they wanted to make your life worse that day. That can happen with any company. But my understanding is their policy is make it right. Yeah, which is... So that's cool. So that's that admirable. Would, so that would make, and there's other companies that are like that. That was just the first one that came to mind. So that's cool. It's expensive. You're paying for that service and the price of the tool. So if that's something that you want, then great. If not, whatever. But if I look into a company and I don't hear a lot of that about it and it says lifetime, I just assume bad. I just ignore it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, bought, um, I bought some files at Home Depot. And it had like lifetime warranty all There's over the like packaging, no but like the name of the company was not, there was no way to contact them or anything. I was like, oh, okay, sure. Yeah. So it doesn't mean anything. So I'm just going to use these files until they are dull and then I will discard them because it's realistically file. you're not, yeah, it's consumable. <laughs> and if I try to claim warranty on a dull file, they're just going to tell me that it's worn out. Yeah. Like, see, so someone in full plane chat, yes, snap on is stupid expensive, but my rep has replaced any failed to have had no questions asked. So I hear that a lot. So I would believe that, but I believe that because users. Yes. I don't believe that because of company and that I will always see it that way. And that is what it is. Yeah. I like this. ADHD idiosyncrasy on float plane says lifetime should mean the same amount of time that a work is protected by copyright before going into the public domain and then let the two industries lobby it out. <laughs> That's actually really, really good. Oh, I love it. <laughs> That's pretty great. <laughs> oh, man. I like that form of doing things. We should do that more often. That's fantastic. Bureaucracy battle? Yeah. Oh, that's that's great. <laughs> oh, I really like that. Um, okay. Should we, uh, are we covering more things? Or are we ditching a merge message? Let's, let's do let's some merge it? messages. Let's call it. Let's call it. It's 830. Yeah. It's 830. All right. Got anyone here from Eric. With the successful launch of the screwdriver and backpack, if you could launch a V2 today, what would you change about them? 
Ooh, wow, that's a good question. Um, Define a V2 because I, you're I, releasing the shorty, right? Or whatever it's called. Yeah, that's not a V2. It's not a V2. That's, that's a completely different. I have one. You want to see it? Yeah, sure. Oh, I don't. I lied. Sorry. Never mind. Then. I left my backpack at home today. Um, uh, oh. It's usually here. So yeah, that's actually, that's very rare. Um, well, I wasn't in office today. I was shooting at my house. Oh. Yeah, I like zoomed over here to do Wancho. That makes sense. Uh, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, man, for backpack, I think the answer would be to do two versions at the same time. I think that uh, we've gotten enough feedback from people that they would rather have it be smaller and um, as particularly that they'd rather it was smaller that I think that less, it's less of a like a, here's what I would do as a V2 of this product and more that here's the second version of it that I would launch alongside. We are working on that now. Uh, there are some challenges getting the ergonomics right with a smaller bag. Um, we still want to keep our anti-chafing um, straps you see a ton of feedback in the in the reviews for the backpack that like man i took all this stuff out of my old bag i put it in the new bag and it just like feels lighter that's not an accident that took a ton of work um we want to make sure that we nail that for the smaller one as well um but if i if i could go back and do it again i would have wanted to launch them alongside each other and for screwdriver man i don't know i don't think don't we will like it needs one i don't think we will revise screwdriver for a very very long time um, we've had a couple of reports of the clips breaking from people dropping it. Um, yeah, oh, the, in the, the bit yeah. retention clips. Yeah. Um, it's <laughs> rare, but it's happening. So it's something that, you know, if, if, if it's less of a V2 and more of a, like a V1.1 though. So if we could make some small revisions to something like that, I'd like to make them. Um, I feel like accessories or alternates are the main thing. So like shorty. Yeah, shorty's coming. Maybe a, a bit holder. Bit holder's coming. Like yeah, like we hired like that. two more like um, mechanical engineers specifically with experience in tool making in the last like three months. Very cool. So, are we already past a hundred? I think maybe. How, how many count, are on your team? It? I don't know anymore. Depends how you slice the team, but I think if you're going with. Full, low plane ink uh i think that's 19 really it's 18 or 19 on uh, float plane ink float plane media ink yeah oh then we're well over 100 not the float plane project to be clear but like any contractor is under float plane ink right i don't know if you knew that okay so like the labs web team oh oh i have no idea then i d actually do not know how many people work here I, it's I, that big <laughs> It's hard to, even just counting my I've I've gotten to the point where we're, when we have morning meetings and I'm like trying to check if everyone's there I can take me a sec <laughs> cuz I have to like actually go through all of it I'm like damn it's a lot of people yeah yeah anyways um enough enough people I think actually um, no i i i sent someone uh -oh. i don't know if they're off probation so i won't say it but i sent someone an email today being like hey so uh i need to hire this position if you want to help me with that starting next week oh to to our hr person yeah yeah we have a dedicated hr person as far as i can tell aside from um like okay i, I don't mean this as like a knock um because she does a lot um, like she, she did some work on like our GRSP program that we introduced and like some other stuff. But as far as I can tell, basically all she's done since she started is like Just interview people, hire people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've been hiring so much. <laughs> Logistics doesn't have any computers anymore. Um, I at, heard about this problem. Yeah. We what? have like no more laptops to give people. We've got no more standardized <laughs> workstations. I think we bought every single one of uh, motherboard type that exists. Um, we just can't, we can't get computers. Oh, that is a first time problem for us. Yeah. Just for anyone watching, usually we've had so many samples come in that everyone's just running on sample machines and the rate that samples come in has always been high enough, but it's been fairly static. Yeah. So it was staying the same. <laughs> the rate of new people is going up. I, I had to give my quadro in my computer to an actual engineer. <laughs> Why do you have a quadro in your computer? I do a lot of solid works. That's amazing. Oh, okay. um, 
now some things I know we outstripped a long time ago. Like we've been buying CPUs for at least a few years now. That makes sense. Um, Cause you can't just use like old gen CPUs for a lot of what we do. Like Nick, uh, on float plane, there's an exclusive of Nick getting a new workstation. So he got the the Best Buy gaming PC from our first Best Buy gaming PC video like seven or eight years ago. And he's been complaining about it ever since because he's one of the most senior people in the company now. And like newcomers get machines with like a RAM stick that's worth as much as his entire computer. And he's <laughs> like, I'm like, what do you even do? Emails? He's like, yeah, but my computer sucks. I'm like, yeah, write, write an email about it. <laughs> so anyway, we finally gave him a new computer, and it's the one from the Best Buy Secret Shopper Gaming PC like, from like a week ago. Oh, I thought it was from like way over. Okay. No, so there's an exclusive of Dennis dressed up as Santa, bringing him his new computer, and it's another f***ing Best Buy PC. <laughs> oh, man. Poor oh, Nick, man. dude. Yeah. Love it. He he reigns everyone else with gifts of merch and all this other type of stuff, and then <laughs> he can't even get a computer. Just give him a trash computer. Um, so sad. Yeah. Anyway, but like that was the norm, probably up until about three years ago, that we would just use whatever we had kicking around because, like, what? It's a functioning computer. What do you want? Like, do your job, right? You got a computer. Let's go. <laughs> but no, now it's like I talked about it when I did the uh, the video recently. Like, what computer would I buy? Because we do have to buy our computers now and um one of the reasons is that while we probably have enough hardware to throw together computers for everyone like in in inventory it would affect our ability to make videos and those computers would be so random that the upkeep on that fleet of machines would be a nightmare standardization is actually nice yeah uh, uh well your new solution didn't work either we're still struggling but we'll we'll, well get through it i mean i gave you guys the money I gave you money. It wasn't enough money. I heard money solves people's problems, right? Give us more money. Right? <laughs> give, us, give us more money. That's always the fix to the previous problem. Yeah, more, more money. <laughs> I need, I need different companies to buy computers from. Um, that's actually the problem. What? Oh, because they just are like out of whatever yeah. we need to buy. I want this type of motherboard for this chipset, and we can't get it. Oh. And so either we have like eBay three to five different standard computers oh. yeah uh, right that's not standard then exactly it's all falling apart um, make more motherboards someone said i i actually just thought about them before i saw this message but it's uh they said wow that's a long one that pushed it all the way off uh how weird would it be if ltt went to puget systems for computers the problem is they're over the border yeah so it's there's like huge issues there yeah it's a pain in the butt so it's it's easier for us to just buy things here. I uh, I, I reached out to uh, Nick from Logistics because my dad is going to be making a, a donation to the company's inventory of what? a GTX ninety eight hundred. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Which apparently we're missing. Very nice. Um, and uh, ninety eight hundred GTX. To, oh right! Not to Sorry. be that yeah, guy. Yeah, no, yeah, 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 right. That was before um, they reversed them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it looks amazing, by the way. The old shroud and stuff. It's oh great. yeah. Um, oh yeah. And I realized this after I sent the message. <laughs> but he's going to be donating a card that is definitely from work. <laughs> so you're going to be getting it back. <laughs> After he's like, he's asking me what to do with these cards, and I was like, I don't know. And I reached out to to Nick to see if work would need them. And then I realized, like a few hours after I sent the picture, I was like, wait, I remember that card. I tested that card like back in the garage. <laughs> Somehow my dad ended up with it. And then it. you tested it at home, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and then it probably got you know handed down from from me to my dad at some point. Uh -huh. No, he still has it. It's uh -huh. like a Twin Frozer two. I I didn't I couldn't actually tell. From the picture, but I think it's like a like a five sixty or something. Okay. But yeah, apparently they both fit slots that are vacant in the like All backlog right. of GPUs. So does, yeah. does one everybody... is coming home and one is new. There does everybody go. just check stuff out, Linus, or like not? I don't, I don't know. Um, I worked in logistics. Things used to be a little more loosey goosey back mm. in the day, and Luke in particular probably got too much leeway. <laughs> I mean, he didn't get paid enough. 
like, let's be real. Yeah. I didn't have any money. It's not like I could give you money, but I had hardware. And you like hardware. Hardware's pretty cool. And you know what's really funny is, like, even back then, I would tell potential sponsors and, like, companies that we would partner with would be like, no, look, because influencer marketing wasn't as big of a thing back then. Tech companies weren't used to actually like paying money for advertising. They 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 had tried to skate by on just the the tech news industry being a bunch of enthusiasts living at home in their basements or whatever, um, and, and just kind of compensating people in hardware. Like one reviewer famously would ask for two of everything that they covered. I remember this one to cover and one to sell on eBay. Uh, like it was, it was a whole thing. Right. And so I, I remember telling, like trying to shift this mentality, like, look, I can't pay my staff in, in computer parts. I need actual money to run this business. And, and ultimately we, we won that battle. We actually, you know, are a successful, I think company now at this point, but it was actually a lie because at least one of my employees, I, I did definitely help at least top up in hardware. I, I've never, I've obviously never sold any of it. And theoretically, unless I like lost things like that one, uh, they they come back eventually. But <laughs> yeah, that's that is definitely true. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna pull you guys back on track. Let's get get through these merch messages. Yeah, for sure. Um, Dan wants to go home. You heard it here first. <laughs> I'm saving you from yourself. Um, <laughs> kind of true. I got We're just one. like hanging out with the people. It's fun. It's fun. Um, I got one here from Shane. Uh, I said I'd buy two plaid shirts if you made it purple. Got to put my money where my mouth is. Last week, you mentioned Got making him. a smaller screwdriver and showed a stubby version on social. Glad you have it with you today, Linus. Uh, have y'all considered making one specifically for small electronics with a torque limit? Um, I don't think we have a torque screwdriver planned right now. It's definitely not impossible, but that it would not be... It's not on our roadmap. So if you see one and you like it, go buy it. <laughs> don't wait for ours. Okay, got another one from Sam. Hey guys, do you have any experience with vintage display tech, like Nixie tubes or uh, ITS-1A Thyrotrons? That's a new one for I've me. I've never heard of that, but it what sounds amazing. Duck? I want a Thyrotron. It sounds like it's from Fallout. Oh my God. Uh, I would love to see a clock assembly stream. A uh, past indicator sent me one of their Nixie tube clocks. Um, my understanding is they, some time ago, acquired a lot of inventory of these vintage Nixie tubes. Um, they don't make them anymore, as far as I can tell. Yeah, here's their site. Uh, we install original Soviet Nixie tubes from the 70s and 80s. I do have a clock. I have, a, I have one of their clocks on my desk. I think it's super cool. Um, but beyond just thinking it's really cool, the way that all the numbers are are front to back like this and they glow to illuminate and stuff like that, I don't know really anything about them. Yeah, it's super cool. See all the layers? of these like filaments or whatever they are, only the active one glows and you can actually see it through all the others, but each number is a discrete element in here. It's like super oh, wow. cool. Yeah, they're, they're super cool. I didn't actually know that's how that worked. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're really cool. And you can see like weird little like, you know, cost saving measures in Soviet Russia, dollar saves you. <laughs> um, but like the two and the five are the same thing. Just ones like this and ones like, you know this? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, there's little that funny stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Easier manufacturing. Oh, yeah, I know the Thyrotrons. They're like the square versions of those. Um, cool. Yeah. Okay, I've got one here from Aaron. I know you're still trying to figure out your shirts, but once you do, would you consider doing a print-to-order for shirts? No. No? No. The quality's crap. Not a sh shot. Not yeah. No shot. Absolutely not. Uh, it's just... Um, we I'm stubborn and I think shirts should look good and feel good and so we're not going to ship a shirt that doesn't look good and feel good yeah. uh, that was the whole reason that we ultimately went and built this whole creator warehouse thing was I was so tired of getting screen printed samples and then finding out that people were getting direct to garment printed product um, that looked like garbage um, your other question was, are you going to do a laptop slash shoulder bag? <coughs> it's really good. We have one. Leakier than a turned on faucet. I know, right? But the <clears throat> the shoulder strap, okay. The shoulder strap on laptop bags like just sucks. You know, it never distributes the weight properly. It always falls down or rides up or like it slides too easily or not easily enough in the strap. 
We nailed it. I'm really happy. Uh, it's closely based on the our padded um, straps for the backpack, but tuned for obviously the different angle that it's going to be sitting on your shoulder. And man, like everyone in the team's like super stoked. Like Nick, Bridget, Matthew, me, all the people who have like tried it. Oh, it's good. It's really good. And because it's designed by us, it has room for a bloody charger in it. Right? I've been seeing laptop bags that are all like nice and they look good and then there's just like boom right in the middle. It's like, oh my goodness. I I have always appreciated about Creator Warehouse and the LTD store about how they sell like merchandise that is heavily marketed by a creator, but it's not like merch. Yeah. Like it, I really gotta stop a, using that it's word. A good, yeah. We should probably rename merch messages, stuff like that. Yeah. Because it's not that gives it association with merch which is usually junk with a logo on it. Yeah. It's not all. Some of it's good, right? Ours is good. Some other people's is good. But in general, I think the assumption that is made when you hear merch is that it's junk with a logo on it. Um, and that's that's not what we sell. We sell good stuff. Hey, Linus. I know you made some long video runs for your home computers. Is there a noticeable latency hit from using optical to copper cabling? No. No. Not I mean, all. it's speed of light. Uh, whether it's light or whether it's electrons running down a wire, it's functionally speed of light. Um, and the converger, the converters are extremely fast. You wouldn't, if you think you're noticing it, you're imagining it. Okay, this one's from Mitchell. Hey guys, love the show. I work in commercial construction and was wondering if you had ever looked into tech used on construction sites, like using LiDAR to measure the walls for window and siding or augmented reality to see the finished product when there's uh, just the skeleton up. Uh, the the closest I think we got was in a somewhat controversial video, the Prepper PC video, where I think probably the most interesting content in it was when we got one of these like underground conduit trackers. So basically, it's like a snake with a transponder on it, and then a handheld like 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 divining rod thing for finding where that where that buried conduit is, and it was super cool. Um, unfortunately, I, I like I wasn't in touch with the company or anything. I was just using the tool, so we didn't get to share a lot about how exactly it works or anything like that. But um, I think that's about the closest we've been. But yeah, that actually sounds like a like a super cool direction we could take things. Hi guys, question for Luke: Have you considered doing native 1440p resolution on Flowplane? Not, really. Not really. No. Um realistic there's there's even some i've i've been sent some screenshots about this i don't know maybe it was from you i don't remember but there's there's some like video players in japan that don't do their their quality selection by resolution yeah they do it by bitrate yep sweet our 4k is more bitrate it's a little bit more complicated than that sure but like you're just adding a selector between 4k and 1080 and then we have to transcode a whole new thing and like it's uh, I don't really see the point. We don't actually get asked for it very often. It's very uncommon that we do actually. Um, I'm even a 1440p monitor boy and I don't care because I just watch in 4K. Like, because you get because you get more bit rate. Like they, they do specifically say their old laptop had a 1440p display but struggled to decode it 4K. That is such an edge case, I think, that to take on the storage so burden of every video at 1440p is just not... Um, it's a laptop screen. It's smaller. Just run it at 1080. It's going to look fine. Our 1080 looks really good. <coughs> not all 1080 is created equal. This is why some of those Japanese players do it based on bitrate instead of resolution. Yep. It's it's actually like pretty darn good at 1080. Yep. Yeah. Last curated one I've got here is from Devin. Hey guys, glad I could tune into the stream this evening. Any plans to discuss the YouTube policy change today that supposedly has a bunch of channels suddenly demonetized? Thanks. I suspect neither of us knew about that. I didn't know. I that. also suspect, um, yeah, it doesn't seem I like was, anybody. I was not aware of um, this news. Hmm. Uh... I don't see anything. Some, yeah, I don't I don't see anything right now. I actually got a couple merch messages about this, so I'm not entirely sure where this has come from. Um 
YouTube policy change. Okay. YouTube. How about just YouTube policy news? The most I'm, recent. I'm going to try searching is... for it on Bing. Okay, so there's up, updated November 2022. More low quality content principles for kids and family content are now in scope for YouTube channel monetization, taking effect in December 2022. That's the only thing I've found, and that sounds like it's uh, maybe like a adding. I, I don't know. Well, here's Bing. Nice. Nice. Let's go. Nice. Good job, Bing. Um. Oh wait, hold on. <clears throat> Whatever this is. Change swearing rules retroactively applied. Apparently, they did not like last WAN show. Are there any changes? There oh, are no changes to our policies. Um. Okay. So this very angry looking guy has a video. Apparently, Moist Critical did a video about it. Oh, okay. Okay, I, okay, well, sorry. We don't know anything about it. I am the one view on this video, apparently. Oh, that's Let's what go. This is what Bing is good for, though. Surfacing something other than, you the, know, the what everyone subjects. else was looking for. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in this case, uh, I mean, it might not be necessarily the perfect resource for it, but, um, okay. Yeah, Moist Critical has a video on it from three hours ago. Huge YouTube change just ruined many channels. Um, oh. I mean, I haven't watched it. I know nothing about it, but maybe. Yeah, I guess you guys is, can go check that out. This is breaking, breaking. Um, and then I've got some uh, potentials for you guys to have a look at if you uh, if you want or. Uh... Sure. Um, I think we've talked enough about tech companies not following through with promises. Logan D. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> thank you for sending in the message. Uh, Daniel E. What do you think the next shop slash IT technician tool upgrade you could see need to improve is? Uh, flat end cutter multi-tool, built-in device reset slash SIM tool for cable management? I am not sure. Uh, we don't have anything on the roadmap right now for IT tools. Uh, definitely more screwdriver stuff coming down the line, though. Uh, okay, I'll go through these. I'll go through these pretty quick. Everyone wants to get home. Theodore H, love the show. Have you considered doing an extreme... Upgrade style show with some more gaming streamers like Stone Mountain 64. It's tough to collaborate with people who are not local. Um, that's one of the reasons that Intel Extreme Tech Upgrade is with our employees because uh, it, honestly, they're already a nightmare to arrange all of the procurement for and set aside a shoot day for and you know, get everyone on set and all the equipment, blah, 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 blah. I mean, if it was in like Arizona or something, whole other level. A whole other level. Now it's a three-day commitment for me instead of a one-day commitment. And as you can probably imagine, I'm our biggest bottleneck a lot of the time. And for what? It's in, it's completely the same piece of content. So it's it's tough to justify. Uh, there's someone asking if we're if we have interest in checking out NASA. I mean, um, sure, but that's one of those you things. You have that's, to show us something cool. Yeah, it's kind of like the ISP. Like, sure. But I'm not just going to stand outside the building and be like, look, it's NASA. And, and it can't be something that you just show everybody on a normal tour. Yep. Um, it, it would have to be something where you're letting us go oh. behind some closed doors, which I seriously doubt is going to happen. Yeah, this says something about private tour. I, I don't think I've ever taken a private tour of anything. In fact, even when I went to Micron, when I went to Intel, both of them, my tour guide offered to show me things that could not be included in the tour. And I said, no, don't waste my time. Because for me, I'm there to bring you guys along. So if yeah. they're just showing it to me, then what's the point? I might be down off camera, but that's a totally different yeah, thing. Yeah, that's this. Guy. I'm really into that stuff, but that like that's well, it's not, not gonna... that I'm not into it. I, no, have I know. a job to do. I, yeah, I'm just saying like it's not it's not going to happen on camera, basically. So it's probably not what you're looking for, but yeah. Thanks for offering, though. Either way, like I don't want to, yeah, cool. I don't want to be like that I've, about it. I've taken advantage of a, a couple, uh, viewers that reached out about saying that they like could get me access to something cool, but I couldn't like put it on the channel. I went to go see, um, a really cool laser lab in Sweden. Yeah, that's cool. I went to go do other stuff. I like happened to be in that area, and they knew I was there. And they're like, "By the way, do you want to come check this out?" And I'm like, "Yes, <laughs> that looks awesome." So I don't know, but. 
Um, I actually, hold on, before we do any more merch messages, I've got a few things on my little uh, notepad. Uh, shirt printing update, we already ended up doing. Uh, backpack zippers, uh, still very oh. much a work in progress. Um, Tynan was on vacation for, it's been Christmas season and stuff. Tynan is the one who's on point for that. Um, he was on uh, vacation for a while and stuff. Uh, there's some delays waiting for things to go back and forth. Um, the entire Creator Warehouse engineering team has had to spend a lot of time setting up their new shop. So when we did our Creator Warehouse tour, that video is completely out of date now. What used to be the entire engineer area is now completely like a, a workshop. So they have an electronics area. They have way better 3D printers now and stuff. They can do so much more fabrication and uh, like rapid prototyping. And then they all have their desks upstairs in what was like the weird like suite area that used to be a living space for the previous owner. Um, so things have been delayed a little bit. Tynan's on it. We're going to find a solution. We're having a hard time designing a like a, a cheaply fabricated plastic tool to swap it out. We're that still confident sense. that we can solve it. Um, there you go. Uh, Richard G., the, the NASA guy, uh, reach out somehow, like my Twitter or um, even support at fullpin.com, and I can just have Joe hand me the ticket info yeah, linus tech tips at gmail.com is our other something like that. broadly available public facing email address that does get checked if we can't if we can't figure out something for for work uh which if we can see cool things like if we could see if we could see how you guys deal with like data and communicating with mm. with things like that could be really cool yeah. if you guys are willing to let us see that um but if it can't be on camera i'm also interested in going down personally um another thing that i have in here um Update on the person who called me out of touch for thinking our printer is being dumb, our t-shirt printer. Uh, I, I responded to them and then last, I think it was last week, I also talked about how I'm just going to be like shadow banning a lot more liberally. I did it like five times and I was like, this is pointless. So I give up. Um, just so you guys know, I what I realized is like, A, this isn't going to do anything because it's an endless flood of just like, whether it's bad takes or whether it's just people going out of their way to to view whatever it is I'm saying or doing in the worst possible light like it's it's never going to stop and so if I if I wage a war against it effectively I lose um and so the other thing too is that every once in a while I mean a stopped clock is right twice a day right so if I shadow ban these people and they do come at me with some kind of valid feedback in the future I'm missing out on that so I update for you guys i i blocked like like four or five people from from commenting on the youtube channel um i would undo it actually if i could i just have no idea how to even do it. i just did it on mobile and i don't even know what their names are anymore so sorry uh, <laughs> for the rest of you it's a it's an interesting yeah. problem because like i i can understand a lot of people that are like never ban anyone open discussion is always best blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I've, I've often been on that train but then you have to understand that any any good thing ever is going to be ruined by humanity um because people will see some created first like that yeah, yeah then ruined yeah uh that's also true um but yeah people are going to see a system like that and go oh i don't get banned for any reason i'm just going to make this person's life horrible by being just incredibly disingenuous and clearly obviously starting arguments based on things that are obviously not true or obviously not said or obviously weren't the reasoning or the or the um meaning of what that person said or whatever else um and they just brutalize but banning people also does create tons of problems so i don't know i the best solution that i have personally seen is the community like correcting itself and we've even talked about that before. We're like, I, I think this conversation that we had specifically was about Twitter, where someone will like tweet something at us. And it's like, oh man, I really want to reply to this in a certain way, but I like probably shouldn't. So I won't. And it's like taxing on your like emotional state. And then you see some viewer just come out of left field and they're just like, bam. And you're like, thank you. <laughs> and I can't, I can't like your response. I can't interact with it, but thanks, bro. <laughs> thanks, like, for, <laughs> thanks for writing what I couldn't. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, that's cool. Thanks, man. Um, 
So I don't know that I guess that would be my only suggestion. And you do see it happen. And I don't know. It is what it is. Um, by the way, uh, this was uh, this was an, the last note I made for myself to talk about um, when we were discussing uh, Wondershare and trying to like bury those product pages that can, and how the internet kind of never forgets, but only just barely. Sort of also does right. Yeah. It all it also does. Uh, this is a really interesting story. Um, there was a Charlottesville Weekly publication called The Hook that closed a decade ago, but um, its archives lived on until its 22,000 stories were suddenly taken offline in June. If you guys want to learn more about this, uh, the Washington Post did an article about it. Uh, former staffers have theories about its mystery buyer, uh, but basically, as far as people seem to be able to tell, um, it's because there was an article about a rape accusation against this buyer who seems to have Whoa. bought the publication just to delete it. Whoa. Wild, hey? Um, so this kind of ties into um, our, some discussions we've had really over the last like few months like about the consolidation of, um, of, of the information that we're getting in the hands of, of a very small few. Uh, I saw a really good like viral tweet a little while ago that was like, if you're, if you're outraged that, you know, uh, Twitter has fallen into the hands of some like jackass billionaire. I'll wait until I tell you, you know, who owns Facebook. Um, who it, owns who, everything else. Yeah, Google, like, that's, Apple. Like, that's one of the things I've, I've talked about this before, and I think people don't really understand my point, and maybe it's because I'm not saying it well enough, but like people are super mad at Elon because he's public. Yeah, his biggest sin is saying the quiet part out loud. Yeah, there's so many more of them. You shouldn't just be mad at only that one because he's really loud. I mean, it like, is obnoxious. Sure. And you can be mad. But there's people do it. Okay. I'm <laughs> not defending him. I need that to be clear. I'm not, and I'm not attacking him either. Honestly, I don't care. I hated Twitter before. I hate it now. Nothing's really that different for me. It was on fire. Now it's still on fire. Um, I don't care how big the fire is. It was still on fire. Um, we didn't start the fire. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but like there, it, 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 a lot of things that people go after him for, it's like, dude, there's like just as bad or worse happening three feet to the left, but they're not publicly talking about it. So you think it's okay? Like that's what? But what about ism is also not a valid defense. Fair enough. But I just, I just don't think that we should only go after people that are more public about their actions. I think if you are against something, you should be against it and focus less on the individuals personally. But what do I know? Not much. <laughs> Hi, Linus and Luke. Do either of you launch fireworks no. to celebrate? See ya. Okay, then. Do you? Um, there's a lot of restrictions on them now. Yeah, I don't like them. Like, I don't think you can... Oh, you have a very, like, firefighter-y kind of background. I always forget about that. Is that because of that? No. Like, I know you were super into... into. I was into it, and now my, my brother is one officially, which is awesome. Okay, I wasn't going to, like, dox that. That's why I kind oh. of approach I, I that think from it's, a super weird no, angle. I think, yeah. it's, I think it's good enough to be to be public now. Yeah, congrats, by the way, Great dude. job, Rich. Finally, yeah. finally. He looks, you waited long enough. He looks real good in a uniform. Yeah, he sports yeah. it really well. Um, heck yeah. He's rising to the challenge exactly how I expected he would. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, but that's, that's not actually, I mean, that part's a bit of a negative, but I don't think it happens all that often, to be honest, especially at like sanctioned events. Or what about like being scaring about animals? Or like, like I don't like that part. Okay. I, I also like, oh, you look up and it's, this part has always bugged me, but you, you look, you're looking up at cool explosion thing and sure it's cool for a little bit. And then there's just all the like, I don't know the correct term, but the like black smog that it leaves behind. Mm. And I'm just like, uh, smoke. I think is the word you're looking for. Is it just smoke? Yeah, it's smoke. But it's like it's not good smoke. But it's, it's also like, 
the emission from I don't think it's I don't think it's just smoke. Well, smoke is is just particulate matter from burning yeah, fair or whatever. Enough. So yeah, okay. it's it's smoke. Yeah. It's nasty smoke. Yeah. yeah and it smoke. lingers and it's gross and all the dogs freak out and all the other animals freak out and people can't sleep properly. And I'm just like, there's so many downsides to this. Fireworks are bad for veterans. Yeah, because it can sound like gunshots or explosions or whatever else, because it is explosions. I just uh, edible uh, whale on Twitch with the red hot take. Luke would have to buy fireworks to use them. That is also a we big know problem. that ain't happening. I de yeah, it is an issue. <laughs> fair, fair. Uh, but like, I don't even really. I'm not like I've gone to a few fireworks shows. Sure. I never really care that much. I always liked firecrackers more, which have been illegal here my entire life. So the only way to get them was to smuggle them. Have I ever told the story of me? I know it. I don't like know. getting detained at the border for trying to smuggle firecrackers into Canada. I mean, I guess if they caught you, you can tell the story. Yeah, I, mean, I, I know the so. story. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That might be story time for another day, though, yeah. just because it's getting pretty late. Uh, I I love I love firecrackers. I love just like bang, just blah, blah, explosions. Like I've I've always been. I used to like playing with cap guns and stuff. Like I'm not, I'm not. I just I'm just not into it. I don't want to like ban it or anything. Just to be clear. Yeah, my, one of my favorites was called. I don't know if it still exists, but it's called Little Dynamite, and they're uh, essentially like. Do you know what a, like a black cat is? Or okay, well black cat's a brand, but that uh, just like little little. It's like it looks like a little tiny stick of dynamite. Um, so colloquially, we called those little tiny sticks of dynamite with the little black cats written all over them, black cats. And you just kind of go, um, we would, we would disassemble like entire things of them so that you could use yeah. them more lip bar. Uh, I don't know if you want to, uh, see what teach people how to make explosives. Well, no, 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 no. Cause, cause they were designed with one fuse for like a hundred of them. So they'd go like, bang, 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 bang. But you, you could disassemble them and just make them into like individual ones. And of ah, course gotcha. I was an idiot teenager. So I would hold them while I was lighting them. Oh, stuff. wow. Yeah, I'd one go off between my fingers once. They were numb Whoa. for hours. Anyway, my favorite though was one called Little Dynamite, which was basically like the little the little black cat ones, but waterproof. It had a waterproof fuse. Oh, and so what I would you do just terrorize fish is well, no, I mean we didn't have any fish in our pond, so whatever. Ah, frogs. Um, okay. I mean the frogs were probably not impressed. Yes, <laughs> uh, but what I would do is. Uh, I'd like stand on the shore of the pond, light them, and throw them in, and you could see them. They'd go down and they'd make little bubbles. <laughs> Looks like a depth charge. Yeah, it, and feels like it. Oh, because it's in the water, which is a non-compressible fluid. Yeah, it would actually transmit yeah. that energy into the shore all around it, even though it's this tiny, tiny little explosive. Interesting. There's also lots of fun in like puddles and stuff. You throw it in a puddle. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I love that stuff, but. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, they're not called M80s. That's a completely different thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I forget who made them. Um, Little Dynamite. Yeah, they're also from Black Cat Fireworks. Here you go. I don't know why you guys. I don't know why you're confused. This is it. Little Dynamite, firework type firecracker, one hundred pieces of the loudest cracker on the in the market. No, I think we all know who the loudest cracker in the <laughs> I was gonna is. go for it. I I was I was going through my head like, can I say this? <laughs> Not on Twitch, so I guess I'm about to be uh, Oh I'm about, boy. I'm about to get a, a suspension. Oh jeez. Uh, anything else we should go over? Uh well there's still a few okay, uh sorry. Nathan says, uh, budding YouTuber, I have the media production covered, but what resources advice do you recommend regarding all the back end stuff, like legal or financial coverage? I would say get an audience first, figure that stuff out later. Find yourself in a Vaughn. Yeah, no, that, could, that couldn't hurt. Uh, Claude, the Squarespace ad reminded me of the time they got upset at Luke for adding the Build It Beautiful slogan to their WAN show sponsor readings. Are there any other examples of sponsors getting upset for things said during sponsor spots? Oh, plenty. I mean, we've, we've crossed swords with... I don't Probably think they were everyone. that upset. They had just retired that phrase. And we're like, can you please stop doing that? Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't yeah. too bad, Claude. Jimmy says, I'm old and remember the days of Leo Laporte. Leo Laporte is still, still around. Do you mean remember the days yeah. of Leo Laporte? That's like when someone asked Weird Al, you know, who do you think this generation's Weird Al is? And he's like, me, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Brutal. Um, why haven't you collabed with him yet? I I've never actually met him. We also um, don't, like he mentioned earlier, you kind of need to be like right here to be able to collab with, which is why we don't have a ton of collabs because it's like, 
a lot of work. A lot of creators are on an extremely demanding schedule. Now you add a bunch of flights into it and all this other type yeah, of stuff. Tough. It's difficult. Um, also, why don't you ever say quick bits on TechLink? What's that about? I just, I don't know. I, I remember telling Riley like nine years ago that I thought it was a dumb name or something and that I wouldn't say it or something. And then people thought it was hilarious that I wouldn't say it. So that's the only reason I do it now. Yeah, I don't even thing. care. Yeah. I've, I've forgotten. I've said it a couple of times. Uh, James says, I currently mostly trust my 11-year-old son to go online without supervision, occasionally checking his Chrome and YouTube history to reassure myself, but feel a bit guilty for doing so. Linus, how do you feel about monitoring your kids' online activity? I do Checking it. the history of the browser is not really doing that, so... Yeah, they can delete <laughs> that, you know. Uh, I do it utterly shamelessly, and the... Um, the the way that I justify that to myself is I tell them I'm going to do it. I tell them I don't want to do it, and I only ever actually do it if they give me some reason to distrust them. Um, but yeah, no, I mean that online activities got to be got to be monitored. My kids are not allowed to install apps without me specifically approving them. Like my, it's funny having a tech savvy parent is a double edged sword. On the one hand, my kids have everything. Like their own gaming computers, uh, the Nintendo Switch, a projector, home theater. Like we have like three separate TV areas in the house where you can watch a movie. Um, we got like wicked fast internet, blah, blah, blah. Like you name it. My kids have got it. They uh, Two of them have their own phones already, even though they're 10 and 8. Um, but let me tell you, that is <laughs> locked down. <laughs> so I don't know. It's tough. It's tough. Uh, finally, Anonymous says, question for Luke. Um, for someone transitioning to software product management from non-tech product management, any suggestions on how to get up to speed to follow the software conversations? That's tough. Um, software moves really fast and everyone is extremely opinionated about all of the directions that it's moving in. Um, oh, wow. From a non-tech product management. Um, oh, shoot. Uh, okay. While you're thinking, I accidentally just did the wrong thing with one. Um, uh, I think we have a women's V-neck coming soon, Dor. I, I, hmm. it depends how close to the dev teams you're getting. Um, if all you're doing is like requesting like features and someone else handles all the actual stuff, setting up tickets, doing a blah, 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 blah. Um, then I think the main thing you need to understand is timelines are messed. Um, timelines are especially bad. Uh, I don't know if this is a grass is greener situation to be fair, but I find timelines in web development to be especially bad because... Uh, there's so many other things that can happen that can screw up what you're working on. Um, I've heard some from some buddies that work in like embedded systems and stuff that it's less chaotic because you pick what you're working on and then, oh, they release an update. Okay, whatever. Uh, your system isn't going to get it. So who cares? Um, when you're working in, in web dev, it's like, oh, okay. Um, iOS randomly decides that they're going to start interpreting interpreting something in some different way. And it's like, well, you better update because all your stuff just broke. Um, so that can be really frustrating. And that can happen in the middle of a development cycle. So you can be like, we are 100% certain, without a doubt, this is never going to happen. But let's say that it did. We are 100% certain without a doubt that it will take us 3.7 weeks to do this. And then three weeks in, someone completely unrelated to you, and there was no way you had any idea of knowing this was going to happen, updates something, and it means you have to do a full rewrite. And it's just like, oh, wow. or not, maybe not full rewrite, but you have to refactor some uh, fairly significant portion of the code to be able to work better because they got rid of certain functions or they got rid of, they did whatever else, and it can be extremely frustrating. Um, so the main tip that I would do is add two weeks or double any timeline you ever hear from any developer. <laughs> um, and this is not this is not trying to be mean to the developers. Like yeah. seriously, they're 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 great. They're doing their best. They are, but just trust me. Do that. <laughs> if it's a short time frame, add two weeks. If it's a long time frame, double it. Like just just do it, because the overpromise. 
um sorry under promise over deliver thing is a good way to go pretty much all the time because it's easier to give more than people expect it's harder to take back from what people expect and you're gonna have issues log 4j anyone yeah yeah there stuff like that can also happen and that can just mess you up <laughs> just like oh, yeah. the 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 world of, uh, of software and meltdown specter meltdown all these different things you can have expected time frames you can have perfectly laid plans just get obliterated by something that you had no way of foreseeing so don't try to tie to reasonable timelines given by developers because developers are going to approach it in a nothing goes wrong sense because how you can't plan you for want you want them to predict that this is going to happen that's not going to happen so like this let, is why we don't read youtube chat by the way <laughs> Oh, it's, it's like, what? Um, so so let them let them put out their prediction and then build in the error for them um and and try to go to bat for your dev team when when it needs to happen because working on i'm answering this for way too long sorry but working on the type of things that they have to work on where yeah, they're trying sitting to go home, there Luke, that's this is sorry. literally the last sorry. one <laughs> sorry <laughs> okay it's my last point and then i'll let us go um they're gonna sit there working on solving broken things all day that was very likely made by them which can in a lot of cases be a fairly like emotionally grueling process and then someone up the chain is going to come knocking and while they've been like bleeding on their own code trying to solve these problems for a week you should try to be the one to answer the door and answer the question as to why it's not ready yet instead of them. Just free them up from that. Those would be those would be my points. All right. I lied. I have one last thing. Brian Lovelace in Float Plane Chat asks, in your home theater setup, why did you go with a Denon versus a more robust solution like the Monoprice Monolith HTP-1? I know the HTP-1 doesn't have HDMI 2.1, just 2.0, but the ease of use and Dirac compatibility seem better than your Denon choice. I wasn't going to not have 4K 120 hertz. Like, it's, I, I intend to put, hook a gaming PC up to it. And, I'm, like, it's a high refresh rate monitor, uh, monitor, uh, projector. So, nothing that didn't have HDMI 2.1 was even remotely in the, um, in, in the running. Not even, not even sort of a, a chance. Makes sense. And I think that's pretty much it. Thank for you for tuning into the WAN show. We will see you again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Bye. Oh, we cleared the queue. Got him. Oh, it's in my other pants. That makes sense. I changed pants there. On on stream? Yeah, which is fine. The stream that was sponsored by Seasonic, Manscaped, and Squarespace. <laughs>